This episode of the One Piece Podcast is brought to you by Shonen Jump. Sign up today to be a Shonen Jump member and follow along with us. For less than two bucks a month, you can read every chapter of One Piece. Plus, you get access to the entire Shonen Jump digital vault, which includes nearly every Shonen Jump series published in English. Series like My Hero Academia, One Punch Man, Dr. Stone, Dragon Ball Super, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and many, many more. Start your free trial today by going to a special page for One Piece Podcast listeners at viz.com slash One Piece Podcast. Again, that website is viz.com slash One Piece Podcast. Enjoy the show. This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 612, for the week of Sunday, March 15th, 2020. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. My name is Steve. And my name is Alex. And we're all alive and well here. Uh, we have on today, very special guest. He is the translator for One Piece in Shonen Jump and Manga Plus. How's it going, Stephen Paul? Hey, it's good to be here. Not everyone is getting a taste of my medicine being inside all the time. Good. Um, unless you're hoarding some sort of medicine that would help everyone. That's good. Oh, no, it's a bad medicine. It's, yeah, antisocial medicine. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, we also have, uh, he is a voice actor. Uh, he has been um, on tons, tons of shows that you know and love. We're really happy to have him back. He was on a year ago, and uh, he is back today. Sung Wan Cho is with us. How's it going, Sung Wan? Yo, what up? It's going good. It's going good. Good. Uh, so we're all healthy, right? We're all doing okay. We're all in Relatively isolation. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the more you say it, the more you're jinxing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, shit. Is that how it knows? One of us oh. is going to find out during the recording of this podcast <laughs> that uh, we are positive. So He's got a bite. <laughs> He's hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a vampire you have to destroy, thing, right? You have to destroy I, I the ran brain, it under guys. a cold that's, tap. Um, destroy the brain. That's the only way to remove the virus. <laughs> so I think since, that's right, yeah. So since this has been such a horrifying thing, uh, we tried to, you know, make a little helpful tool to help you wash your hands, and that is our, as Steve dubbed it, best wash your hands collection, which includes 20 to 30 seconds of all your favorite One Piece music, uh, ranging from all the openings and endings that you know and love to the most esoteric One Piece stuff you've ever heard um, or never heard, um, including uh, that song that uh, Luffy sings on Sky Island. So you can enjoy all that, sing that as you wash your hands, which you should be doing. Uh, we also just put up yesterday our, on a very different note, uh, discussion about the Watsky Oda interview, as well as our discussion about our evolving One Piece fandom, uh, which I feel like is less relevant this week, especially since this week's chapter is all sorts of kick-ass, and I am extremely passionate and exciting, uh, excited to be talking about it. Um, I don't know about the rest of you. We should probably just get right into it. I'm pretty yeah. exciting, I think, yeah, as a person. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's 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 talk about the manga. This is the manga recap for chapter nine hundred and seventy-four onward to Onigashima, also available on Shonen Jump and Manga Plus, free as soon as it comes out in Japan. Did I mention it was free and legal? Uh, so check it out there. But Ed, what the hell is going on here? So it's volume 22 of Gang Bedge's Oh My Family, and Gotti has saved the Godfather's wife. Or has he? Or Well, yes. We'll see. Um, <laughs> that I, would, yeah. I, I had this thought, too. I was wondering if, if this is actually Loa by mistake. I so hope uh, so. Yeah, even though I, I went back, I actually did a little bit of research and just went back and looked at some of the previous chapters. And uh, in the salon, when she's captured, she is referred to as Chiffon. Uh, 
So she still has the curler in her hair there. So uh-huh. there could be uh-huh. more salons. Like Lola could have been getting a haircut at the same time. Well, okay. Good. Anything else you want to talk about <laughs> with this? That, that doesn't mean like siblings yeah. get their hair cut. Well, depending this is on one the piece. Age, actually, yeah, they have hair slightly is, different hair, hair is important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a little different. But let's see what I I I, I, I kind of hope there is like a little bit of like twin mix up here because I'll I'll be comedic. I don't want Gotti to just rescue Chiffon and then they come back to Beige and all of a sudden like Lola walks up like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Like it, it'll be really uneventful. So. Yeah, volume twenty two. That's not very far into the typical cover story. No. So there's, how long does it last? Usually, uh, like 30, 40, uh, 30, 30 something. Well, I should, okay. Let me say, nothing has happened. Like, what has actually happened? You guys were talking about this last the, time. The, the germ patrol showed up and made everyone start kissing each other, and then they disappeared. That was bad timing. Bad timing <laughs> with the virus. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez>. Starting early. <laughs> um, well, if you, can't, if you can't find humor in things, um, okay. That's, that's the Corona Pirates. <laughs> By the way, if you guys weren't at home, weren't sure what we were talking. About. The coronavirus. Coronavirus. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, the, the Corona yeah. Pirates, which are obviously a Mexican group of pirates who love beer and nothing. Oh. Okay, we're yeah. moving on. Moving let's on. Like, let's moving not on. get all. Let's, yeah, geez, let's not get all. Uh, you know, get little East blue filler here. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, you literally, you literally made that joke two weeks ago. Um, uh, did I? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> anything I do. Zach's going to drag Alex down with him. <laughs> That's fine. I was going to make a joke about the uh, the Kokoro uh, no virus, which oh uh, which affects your heart and soul. <laughs> okay, Ed, please, for the okay, love of the God. Coronavirus, anyone? No. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I'm writing all of these down. Um, <laughs> I hate this podcast. All right, so uh, back in the pleasure hall, we get Komurasaki is talking to Kyoshiro here, and uh, Komurasaki says, "I have more coins for you, Ushimitsu," and uh, he says, "You're putting yourself in danger again." Well, the money checks out. I'll go distribute it. I will go distribute it in Ebisu Town, and uh, she says, "Thank you," and he replies, "Please remember to wear your blood bags under the kimono, my lady." Rochi is completely smitten with you, and he has no idea that you are Lord Odin's daughter. I'm sure that must be difficult for you. Um, if the time comes, we will separate Komurasaki from Orochi through death in order to keep you safe. And uh, I guess that's uh, Komurasaki saying, I'll be fine. We're almost there. We're almost to 20 years. And uh, so this is um, this is a few months ago. It's not exactly clear when this is all taking place. I, I think assume this is it's... like very soon before the Orochi's meeting with her, or maybe that morning, right? Yeah. Stephen, this really? no, no. So it's it says a few months ago. This is from the present day. So this is before oh, Kinemon, Kanjiro, and Raizo leave Wano in search of allies. Um, mm-hmm. Like this is before they all get you know separated between Dressrosa and Punk Hazard, et cetera, et cetera. Got it. Okay. So uh, the the castle is um is is a is a mess. He says that they come for me. The ghosts of the past. They've really come. Toki's powers were real after all. Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kikunojo, Momonosuke. The five of them have leapt into the present from that very day twenty years ago. Does that power really exist? They escaped from that burning castle. You sure? And uh, Ka- that was Kaido. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ka- and Kaido continues. He says. You sure someone isn't just getting a rise out of you because you're terrified? <laughs> and uh, I guess <laughs> Orochi says, I'm sure of it. Look at this letter. Um, keep watching the shores. I'm certain you'll spot the people leaving this country. And uh, I guess those are his little servant guys. They say, yes, sir. And uh, Kaido says, well, don't kill them. They're still alive. I've got questions for the Kozuki survivors after the last 20 years. Hmm. So, mm. yeah, sorry. So, I, so- uh, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, this. Is, so when he says, I'm certain you'll spot people leaving the country, this is, in other words, at this point in time, Orochi has just gotten a letter from his spy who has now appeared in the present. And 
he's so he he knows that they're going to leave the country soon and that's why he's telling these guys keep an eye out for people trying to escape and, and for those so who remember when Kinemon went through his story again, uh, re- recounting once what happened once they got to the present. They mentioned that somehow they knew they were leaving the shores and uh, getting mm. shot at when they, when they were wow. heading out, which is why they crash landed in Zo, I think, or something. Um, or I, they they kept getting yeah. attacked is is part of the problem. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's all been explained before. Yeah, yeah, Sungwon. And then uh, Orochi continues, uh, this man is a trustworthy one. He was born into a popular theater troupe, but he lost his parents right on stage due to persecution within Wano. Family of the Daimyo Killer, eek! And there's a little flashback of uh, Shadow Man's uh, pa- parents getting killed. The only life he knew was in the theater. Now that he was utterly adrift, he could only survive by acting out a role. And then he's talking to the Shadow Man. You are a descendant of the main Kurozumi family? That's right. And I, oh no, wait, that's the Shadow Man talking to Orochi, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yeah. Are you a descendant of the main Kurozumi family? That's right. And I got rid of the par- people who killed your parents. Kill, kill, kill. But our vengeance is only just beginning. You will live your life as a true Kozuki. And ultimately, without a single soul noticing, you will die as a Kozuki. That is the grand role that I gave you for this stage. And there's a devil fruit. Can you play it for me? I've always been searching for the right place to bury my bones. <laughs> it would be an honor. Because we don't know what they sound like no, right now. But your, that, that, voice sounds, that voice sounds like, like Homer Bill. Simpson. <laughs> or no, Homer he's, Simpson from season one. I was yeah, he's, well, he's, he's been protected. Uh, his it voice would be has been an altered. honor. <laughs> we should all go out for frosty <laughs> chocolate and frosty <laughs> chocolate milkshakes. Bart? Bart? His what? only pleasure is in becoming another person. Every time that I went to Odin Castle to borrow money, he brought me twice the necessary amount out of the safe. It was only because I had that stockpile that I was able to join forces with you. And is this also him here? The information he brought about that fool. Yeah, I think uh, he's okay. saying that to um, to, Kaido. to Kaido. The information he brought about that Fool Odin's raid was helpful too, I assume. But the part that made him truly insane was at the execution. He was fully prepared to die alongside Odin. He has no mind of his own. He lived as a perfect vassal of Kozuki until I stopped him. And he sent me information all the while. He was so faithful, it was almost eerie. Um, nice. So I, I just want to clarify. So I think the what's the old woman's name? The ch- was chest. Uh, Higurashi. Oh, yeah. it was a cicada. They're both cicadas, right? So I think right. she's Aunt the Clay. one who killed yeah, Aunt Clay. That's that was her name. She's the one I think who killed the uh, parents in a Batman esque kind of scene, uh, or killed the person who killed the parents. There we go. Um, mm. yeah. so she's Batman. <laughs> she is Batman. No, he's Batman. <laughs> Shadow, yeah, Shadow I, Man is I, I'm not sure. I, I think it's Orochi is saying that they killed his parents, but I think Oda might be doing one of his things where he switches the speaker without yeah. making it clear because the Kyo 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 is obviously her laugh. Right. I so, <laughs> Yeah, I weird. think you were descendant of the main Kurizumi fl- family could be either uh, Orochi or Shadow Man. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that would be the witch talking. Sometimes it's a little weird bubble wise. Uh, who's mm-hmm. talking? No, it's confusing. Some, yeah. No, this yeah. one's it's like confusing. a it's like a Skype call when everyone's trying to talk at the same yeah. time. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, no, wow, I wow. talk next. I'm the leader. <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm talking, and it is Ed's turn. Uh, okay, yeah, Ed's turn. so back in the present day, Flower Capital, <clears throat> and now it has been twenty long years since the tragic death of the legendary samurai Kozuki Odin. Is the story of the deep grudge between the Kozuki clan and the Kurosumi clan, working with the pirate Kaido. In order to fulfill Kozuki Odin's wish of opening the country, the samurai left 20 years into the future, and after several months of risking life and limb, they found like-minded allies to the cause. We get a great ensemble page with Kinemon at the center and sort of circling out the whole, pretty much everything since, like, um, since Punk Hazard, really. And also the... Um, the great four-person panel with uh, uh, Kikunojo, Odin, Kaido, and uh, Orochi. It's a good panel. It's almost like a sequence uh, in the opening of an anime based on Kinemon. 
I want to see that <laughs> opening <laughs> now. Uh, that, that's Toki. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah. The woman, that one. Yeah, that, yeah. Right. You're right. All right. Um, so continuing. <clears throat> Their fervent hopes were not in vain. All in all, they amassed an army of 4,200 warriors with weapons and ships. If all goes well, the soldiers for the raid will gather on the evening of the fire festival at Tokage Port, onward to Onigashima. If only all had gone well. And uh, we uh, are back where we were. And uh, we, we hear Kinemon, I think. Do not hold me back, Lord Momonosuke. No, stop. This is suicide. Um, and they call it, they call it the names Kinemon, Kanjuro, Raizo, Kiku, Kawamatsu, Dogstorm, Ashra. Stop, stop where you are. Um, I don't know if you wanted to continue your narration at um, to the next page. Sure. There was not a single one of the 4,200 soldiers that should have been present, and there were signs of destruction at the port with stormy weather all about. No escape route. And as our, um, and we get a shot of our samurai shoving off as uh, uh, Kinemon looks uh, determined as ever. We have not given up, Lord Momonosuke. Our low numbers will allow us to sneak into their midst undetected, that I might plant my katana into Kaido's neck. As he leads the charge, um, we see everybody uh, row in that boat. Um, and uh, Shinobu is holding back Momono- uh, a, a crying Momonosuke as uh, Kinemon continues to shout, as long as we still live, we shall never give up. Uh, Kiku is sobbing. Um, and I, I think uh, this, this might be Raizo talking. Kinemon still talking. Oh, okay, cool. Um, as we, yeah, we, we, flash, uh, we, we flash through the faces of everybody on the boat. But it just doesn't make sense. Does this mean our plan was leaked again? I thought the same thing. In fact, I suspect we all did, says Kanjiro. I did not want to consider this possibility, but it might be that one of us is in league with the enemy. Bang. bang. Um, God, this, this panel, by the way, is super cool. Uh, it, it looks, it, I mean, I, I love the woodblock wave, wave so much. Uh, they're, they're so good. Um, but at this point, I do not even want to know. And, um, uh, Kiku grabs Kin by his uh, by his kimono and says, Master Kin, this isn't like you. If you aren't prepared to find the traitor, cut him down and move onward. Uh, then none of us can do so. But whoever it is, they will not confess. And Kanjura yells, Kiku is right, Kin. Let us clear it up all now. And we move on to the next page. As Kanjura. By acknowledging that it was me. It's me, Kinemon! It was me all along, Kinemon. <laughs> you all bought it. Even my immediately my immediate family bought it. Okay, enough references. Um, <laughs> I I can't wait until this shows up in the anime so that we can get some uh some some quality after effects cropping. Of course. Uh, ah, son of a bitch. Um was my reaction. Uh, but moving on, uh, yeah, Kenimon is completely shook, and he's like, Conjuro? He says, like, knock it off. Like, we nearly boiled to death in that pot together, and Conjuro says, that's right. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to complete my role better than to die with you. Uh, ever since I lost my will to go on as a child, I've been searching for my place to die. It's an awful lot like Law's flashback. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> The man you thought I, I was never existed. I shared joys and sorrows with you all, earning your absolute trust, but hating none of you and meaning you no harm. So I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> says, if I don't survive, tell my wife hello. <laughs> the, the one thing I did was continually send Lord Orochi information. Uh, Kiku is, of course... Angered, it's like, why would you do such a thing? He says, my name is Kurozumi Kanjiro. <gasps> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Kurozumi S. S. Kanjiro. <laughs> oh, no, not the will of S. <laughs> the, the, the pumpkin clan has uh, had a long history in Wano. Yeah. Um... 
<laughs> and I think this is <laughs> and then Conjuro continues to uh, monologue here. He says, like when our fan uh, when our when our plan first leaked, that wasn't because of Law's subordinate squealed. I shouldn't be the, that surprised that Yasuhe exhibited quick, clever thinking, changing up the meeting place. But as soon as that information made its way to me, his death was officially in vain. Um uh, <laughs> and Contra, um, no, this is a uh, Kinemon twisting the, twisting the knife here. Yeah, and Kinemon is in, in tears at this point, angry but in tears. And uh, Conjurer tears. once and once again, yeah, the worst, the worst kind or the best kind. I don't know. <laughs> They're all bad. All tears are bad. Um, and he says, and Zo, you you should not have been able to reach Zo without a memory card. So how do you think Jack would show up, huh? Why didn't you expect any of us? Yes, like that was my point. Us, the reader, like <laughs> <laughs> covering his tracks. Yes, each it's like, each one of my it's like doings a work of Machiavellian art. <laughs> <laughs> As he's like placing down the volumes of One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until uh, I can't wait until he's eventually rested and goes. Oh right, all that stuff I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Sideshow Conjuro. Oh, you're giving me a lot. You're giving me a lot of titles to write down. Um, yeah, I'm getting. I'm getting my shit in on my one page. So. Yeah, you are. Um, I like how he also says, "Why didn't you spe- suspect any of us?" Um, but anyway, why didn't you suspect your own until it came to this? It shouldn't have made sense to you. None of it this entire time. You couldn't see the, your nose in front of your face. Blah blah blah. Uh, so we get a huge spread here of Kaido's insane ships um really just this is super cool spread i like this a lot got new ships (laughs) um you also see the wano waves in the foreground here uh and he and he continues um oh i'm sorry this is just a normal grunt um one of the pleasures or gifters or whoever saying hey it's true just like lord orochi said there's a little boat heading for onigashima and they just laugh isn't it cute Look at those little idiots. Um, I can't believe it, really. Uh, it really is all those Akazaya samurai, and our spy is among them? And Kanjiro uh, just says, indeed. Um, indeed, this is a disturbing universe. Um, something I've been saying a lot. And Kinemon slices Kanjiro's head off, and that's that. I like how he doesn't fuck around. He's like, Kid K- Kanjiro, fuck you. Like, I'm going to kill kill you on the spot. Uh, I respect that. Like yeah, I it. really respect this, especially since this is someone he has called a friend for decades. Realizing this, he's pretty unbelievable that he's able to realize this, uh, absorb this, and then cut his head off. Yeah. But not really. Uh, well, <laughs> so he thinks, as uh, Kikunojo is shocked at all of this. And uh, the headless conjuro begins. Ka, ka, ka. I could have kept my secret and sunk to the bottom of the sea with you, true to my role to the very end. But Lord Orochi stopped me. He said, well done. The final act is finished. So once I bring Momonosuke here, this little kid, uh, to Onigashi, my <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you all know this chapter that. sure is like helping us like catch up and everything. Um, you all know this kid, right? Okay? That, right here. <laughs> this is Momono, okay? Uh, you all know him. He's the he's the creepy one who really likes Nami way too much. Um, and he said, "Wait, wait, what, Lord Momonosuke? Why is Conjuro back at the port?" So yes, we find out on the next page what happens, Stephen. And then the headless Conjuro's body is fading away with a familiar ink-like look. And they're like, wait, what is this one? It's, it's a painting? And uh, Dog Storm is like, but the Conjuro we know couldn't paint that well. And this was the part for me when I was like, oh, you piece of shit, you fucking traitor. Because it, <laughs> the uh, it turns out Conjuro is not a bad artist at all. He's actually He's a, a super good artist. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's been he's been lying to us, and uh, so Conjuro because I just wanted to get a bad joke in. <laughs> uh, Conjuro smirks uh, as he has a uh, Momonosuke trapped in his clutches on the shore, and uh, then we we get a kind of a long view. It's a small little panel here of the the ships in the distance from the perspective of the shore, and we hear some voices, and it's not clear who these are. 
uh, someone is saying, ah, oh, geez, how can you sleep at a time like this? Someone else is saying, ah, is the ship fixed now? And the someone who kind of sounds like Luffy probably is going, woo, I ate and I slept and now I'm awake. And that's when I'm the toughest. And uh, Kanjiro is confused, like, wait, who is that? And then at the bottom, uh, all of a sudden, there's a huge explosion on the side of uh, one of Kaido's ships. Uh, someone says, fire! And uh, the, the crewmen are screaming. And uh, then we see a familiar chest uh, saying, sorry, we're a little late. And uh, Luffy, he's, he's doing his laugh. <laughs> and uh, then we see from the pirate's perspective, uh, who is that? And we... Uh, we can see uh, a small figure of the sunny bursting out of the water as they're saying, look at these waves. Like, who's that? I thought we sank all the enemy ships. And uh, on the little boat, uh, Kinemon and, and Kamatsu are looking down in, in shock. There's something down on the seafloor. And now it is a uh, Law's submarine that is bursting up out of the water uh, with them on top, um, which is a pretty, pretty classic um submarine trope uh just uh bust them up out of the water who takes a robot out to sea in the middle of the storm are you crazy don't take the sea for granted samurai we see uh that this is uh this is law um, who is scolding them wait huh is that and then there's more cannons shooting and uh, one of the ships gets blown up from the other side they're taking fire from the other direction and uh this time it is a uh, uh, it appears to be Kid who is saying, I saw all those ships and samurai hanging out at the other port like idiots. What are they doing? I nearly sank them all to get them out of my way, um, which seems to suggest that, in fact, all of the the missing ships and people that uh, we were wondering where they had gone. Apparently, they're just hanging out at some other port, um, which is has not yet been revealed. And Rizo says, oh, that looks like dot, dot, dot. Oh, oh, it's me now? It, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Sir Luffy, Kinemon shouts, is everyone all right? Uh, Luffy goes, so you showed up after all, Jaggy. And someone on the boat is saying, what in the world is happening? Uh, kid goes, like I'd have you have the glory for taking down Kaido. They're yelling across an ocean of waves here. Uh, Momonos is going, Luffy! And Kondro's like, huh? Well, kind of, why didn't I hear about this? <laughs> um... This doesn't make sense. They said we just. All right, who's talking here? Uh, this. Oh, it's the bad guy. The pirates. Yeah, That's they, just the they, random. We just had to yeah. sink a few samurai in a rowboat. But these guys are pirates. The worst generation. I thought they were locked up. Hey, you! Don't pick on samurai in a rowboat, you bitches. When you're at sea, you fight against pirates, and it's this dope <laughs> ass law, Luffy, kid. They're here. They're gonna fuck them up. Next chapter, March twenty second. Are you reading the stands? <laughs> <laughs> you bitches! Oh, oh, okay. yeah. oh I was. You're I thought. Fucking see, you fight against pirates, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you fight against Nakama. Asterisk Nakama is uh, the most powerful word for friendship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they use it in. That's why they use it in Azokin. I, 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 I. Oh God! Uh, I should just. I should have just had Sung Won through the whole thing, and I immediately regret <laughs> not. Um. <laughs> anyway, that is chapter nine hundred and seventy-four. Um, okay. it sure is. Uh, how should Stephen? I want to hear your thoughts. My thoughts first. Yeah, uh, go for man, it. this was a great chapter. Um. And I, I really liked, uh, you know, I think I was talking with uh, with Greg about this uh, chapter and uh, we were saying, like, I, I love how it's kind of like a companion to the previous chapter in that, like, at the end of the last chapter, you know, everybody's like, oh, man, Denjiro is actually Kyoshiro. Like, Kyoshiro is a good guy and he's on our side and he's going to like he's going to have some plan that he's been working on. And he's going to help us get out of this this mess. And, like, that's awesome. And then this chapter, it's just like, oh, shit, Kondro's the bad guy. Oh, god damn it. Like, we're all screwed. Um, so I, I thought that was a great, like, up and down um, kind of uh, succession of of twists that and up, uh, and was, up at the end again. It was Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, of course, yeah, at the end, 
um, to to have uh, Luffy and and Law and Kid, who are kind of like the, I guess the the head figures of the the worst generation. They seem to be kind of like the the leading men. They were um, paired together at uh, Sabati back before the right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, so that that was a pretty awesome and and uh, dramatic reveal. But um, I mean, yeah, like just as a a way to end the flashback and to finally get us back to the present, you know, on that, uh, you know, stormy seaside uh, where we left off before this extremely long flashback began. Mm. Um, It's just so it's, it's a great, uh, you know, he brought us back in style and I I think really set the stage for, um, you know, the, um, the wheels to hit the road and, and to get us moving forward again. And uh, I think that's the part for me that, that just feels the best of all to be like, all right, let's go. Let's, let's, um, let's finally get, uh, get the present day story moving again. So that's what I'm most excited about. Um, I just want to add, and I, this came, came from, uh, Esperia, uh, sorry, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Perira on, uh, Twitter and also, uh, Kumi, uh, this, uh, the last time these guys have been together was 12 years ago in our time, obviously, uh, chapter 504 was the one uh, where they all stood together. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, big. That's almost, almost half the series. Yeah. Yeah, uh, almost uh, uh, actually, they were all together in One Piece Stampede. So, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, Steve. <laughs> Just because of that, you don't get to go next. Sung Wan. <laughs> uh, not to backpedal, but last chapter's reveal. What, were you guys like surprised by the Denjiro uh, reveal? Because I know. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh really? Because I was like, "That's got to be him, right?" Like, I, I was, well. I was surprised that it was the Ushimitsu Kozo was. Uh, he was yeah. the thief. Yeah, yeah. yeah it didn't cool. occur to me that 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 it would be one person, like that, like well, either somebody's you know Denjiro and somebody's Ushimitsu Kozo, but it's not the same guy. No way. Uh, is that what you're asking, or are you asking if we thought that Kyoshiro was the the traitor? Or wait. Hold on. I maybe I need well, to remember last last <laughs> chapter. Ushim who that who is Oh the is oh, oh the Ushimitsu is the thief. He's the Robin Hood guy. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the in general that uh Denjiro is Kyoshiro. Kyoshiro was that yeah. Like? Uh, a little. Not my a money was on that he was like on Z- uh, my money was that he was Zoro's teacher, but that was just me wanting to bridge that gap in my head. Because remember when they sh- when they showed Denjiro, I was like, "Well, that's got to be Kyoshiro, right?" Because <laughs> who else is this random guy gonna be? Um, anyway, I was just wondering about because uh, I know like last week people were, like freaking. Out. I was like, I thought that was kind of <laughs> clear, but maybe the, yeah. They they uh, I think I guess they sort of spoiled it in the anime opening because uh, Kyoshiro shows up with the rest of the Akaza and I and like while you know while the opening is going. Um, I in my my head I was just like ah that. that I mean it's be. cool it's a cool like reveal but no it is I, I, I just I, was, I wanted it I didn't want it to be so cut and dry I guess right uh, but anyway thoughts on this chapter uh, it's a good chapter like I uh, when they introduced the spy I wasn't sure who it was going to be I definitely wasn't expecting it to be Conjuro but that's also because I always forget Conjuro is there uh, but I don't know how you purpose. guys. Yeah, I think Maybe. that was the, that was how uh, he did it. Uh, okay, okay. I just don't like Conjuro that much. Is my my personal uh, opinion. But uh, that does make sense, though, that he doesn't stand out too much. Um, it is a good reveal, though, and he, I do like his uh, very, very, very thorough monologue uh, that he gets to <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of fun with. Um, like just like you guys said, rubbing in every single moment. Hey, remember this part, dipshits? I remember this part, dummies. Um, it's very, very dickish. Uh, and then I like, like I, I, I got you. Got to love when uh, Luffy comes at the very end, um, to rescue them. And then I actually love Luffy Law Kid as like a group. Like I think that's a really fun because they're always kind of like arguing with each other, but at the same time they're there. Together, it's 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 fun shit. So overall, uh, uh, I enjoyed the chapter. Uh, Alex, yeah, wow, what a what a really great chapter. Um, 
echoing Steven in that, like, yeah, I love that. Now we're just, we're ramping up pretty much immediately. Um, Condro being the spy was unexpected for me. Um, uh, I'll echo Sung Won in saying that, like, yeah, I sort of forget that he's there half the time, too, just because, you know, there's there's nine of these dudes, and um, we haven't really seen him do much in a while. Uh, the thing that's interesting to me is that he is the only one who is dressed, like, straight up dressed like a kabuki performer, and figures that he's the one who's the actor, right? Like, he's playing the part of, uh, of a vassal, but in fact, he is a Kurizumi. I thought that was... I thought I think that's pretty cool, and I don't think I've seen any theories on the internet about like him being the traitor and that being that's the good, reason why. That's a good they, point. They were definitely there. There were yeah. definitely lots of lots of of theories about Conjuro. I, I'll say I, that I definitely I, I googled to... Conjuro traitor immediately after, and there were like five Reddit threads. I was like, damn, these people <laughs> they they They're figured that shit spoilers. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, one hundred percent. No, I just I just want to add, Alex, that Greg did post the, the guy's name is or or girl, uh, Quan Isra, who this is what they posted on March sixth, saying so that's well that's a while ago. One yeah. popular theory is that Conjuro is just pretending to be a bad artist when in fact he's his drawing is actually super good. And when he met Odin, it was also described that he was pro- uh, persecuted uh, in the past, leading to a theory that maybe he's a Kurazumi, um, mm. which is a mm. really cool. Yeah, that's some great insight. Wow. Man, I thought. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think else. that. Yeah, but the fact that he is. Uh, it turns out that like you know, oh, he's this theatrical guy. He's basically a uh, like a funky. Uh, he's like a funky. Uh, like okay. a mysterio a mysterio type 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 guy um which is uh i don't know i i usually i usually go right for these uh hammy uh villains who who are nothing but theatrics so uh, who are masters of illusion so i feel like he's a cool mysterio analog now in my head um to use a spider-man uh comparison um it was funny after last week's chapter by the way i was ta- i was thinking about like okay well if Dinjiro is Kyosho, then what about like all the blood and why, you know, uh, Komurasaki was staggered after like he, he sliced her. But, uh, I like that. Uh, we found out that she was wearing a squib this entire time. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yep, yep. It's, it's jelly. <laughs> We're having a party. <laughs> um, so what got me, what got me a little confused at first was when you see the shadowy figure, um, I thought it was like one of big mom's soul people. Yeah. For a hot sec, because normally, yeah, like when Oda draws a shadowy figure, it's just you know a disambiguate, like a disambiguated sort of silhouette. But this was like a uh, like a ghost looking thing. So initially, I thought that um, that the traitor was uh, like one of Big Mom's souls and could inhabit one of the vassals and just made them do oh, stuff without Jesus them Christ. thinking about it. Yeah, it was <laughs> very convoluted. So when we actually got to the reveal, I'm like, oh, I see. He was just doing a weird, like, uh, this could be anyone type type figure. I was taking it much too literally. Yeah. It, it'd yeah. be pretty hard, to be fair, it'd be pretty hard to, like, conceal the silhouettes of all those characters because they all look so fucking wacky. Yeah. I wish it was just Conjuro's silhouette. Like, it's clearly Conjuro. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have oh, yeah. everything? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that Simpsons uh, thing. Um, the same episode, I think. Was, yeah. Which, a Bob one. yeah. Which popular character is the traitor? You guess Conjuro. <laughs> you are wrong. He was never he was popular. Never popular. popular. Yeah. <laughs> I do like how his devil fruit looks like um like a brush with ink on it. I think that's really cool. Yeah, what's his uh, technical power? Is he the ink ink fruit? You're the one with the vivary cards stack, uh, why don't you tell us? I don't read <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> I don't remember when like uh I'd have to go back to the chapter where he's introduced or or something where he whips out his power because he says, you know, he's a mag you know, he uses magic, you know, like the rest of the uh the Wano peeps. Um Yeah. Is it oh, that when remember... drawings come to life? Is that the? Yeah, I think that's his power. Yeah, like, but it, it it is, but I don't know what the name of it was. I could just look him up. I don't know why I'm yeah. asking. <laughs> but this is great. Like after we finish Wano, I'm definitely gonna go back and reread all of like all of Punk Hazard Dress... and just. Someone said, I, I think yeah, it was all Kendrick, of it. Said like, it'll make me re- want to reread Dress Rosa, and I can't believe I'm saying that. But yeah, yeah. it's it's. I mean, definitely those parts of Dress Rosa. <laughs> Yeah, I can okay. definitely still think of parts of Dress Rosa that I don't want to revisit, mostly involving trouble. 
Um, I was going to say mostly involving senior pain. Oh, come on, Ed. It's fun <laughs> getting into trouble. <laughs> okay. trouble again. Yeah, we, we didn't get a, a name for Conjuro's Fruit. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, that should have that should have raised some eyebrows there too. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Uh, uh. One last thing I, I want to say um, is that uh, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast like dozens of times before. But like when we saw Kid immediately in one, I'm like, oh, they're gonna they're gonna do a, a like a sub uh, a Shabandi reunion uh, panel where it's gonna be like the three of them kicking ass together. And lo and behold, um, that last pan that last page, ooh, ooh yeah, goosebumps, goosebumps, my friends. Uh, An affiliation with the R.L. Stein series, the popular R.L. Stein young adult novel series, of course. Not those Steve. kind of useful. <laughs> uh, yeah, like what a difference a week can make. Uh, I loved this chapter from start to finish. Uh, it w- <laughs> it certainly was dense. Uh, just looking back at it, there's so many speech bubbles and narration boxes, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we're getting out of the, uh, the flashback because I think the flashback ended i i should say more last chapter ended with like two to me pretty obvious reveals that denjiro is kiyoshiro and uh and hiori is komen Wasaki. and it's like yeah yeah we, we we've been known we've been known uh so i think this chapter was just in retaliation of that it was just hitting us hard with so many revel- revelations that not too many of us i think predicted mm-hmm. um but uh the uh so yeah like uh just the whole uh the traitor thing uh i is like my heart started racing when i was getting to like pages uh eight and nine and i was thinking like all right so i guess we're gonna like a whole chapter we're gonna have to try and figure out uh, who the traitor is and i was mm-hmm. already like i was already in my like thoughts thinking i'm like uh, it's like is would it be okiku it's like is she just acting here no nah, no nah, it's like i don't think so i'm like what about kawamatsu because you know he was like you know uh hiori uh left him and all that uh maybe it's ashura and then like just like <laughs> contra was like it's me and i was like <laughs> does it remember me <laughs> i was like no <laughs> okay well, like the four other characters first like oh yeah kawamatsu oh Kondro. yeah oh yeah that's right that's wait you're still on this boat <laughs> <laughs> well that's usually you know and with who done it or just like any like any storyline where there's like the traitor you, you you gotta look at the the people that aren't saying anything or mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's like the nicest ones there well, i also think with with oda that he would do something where he would make the character the turncoat who is someone he introduced a long time ago not someone mm-hmm. who has had the focus on them recently and that yeah. you're thinking a lot about them Kondro yeah. is sort of perfect for that. Kondro mm-hmm. or um or or Rizo, but I don't think Rizo's circumstances would have uh, would have allowed for that because he's not even uh, in I, this. I disagree. Scene. I th- I think what was so perfect about this, not to cut you off there, Steve <laughs> and Ed, um, but that Rizo also could have had the motivation for it because he used to work in the Ono Oni Uh He was a ninja, and you know the whole thing about that is that you're secretive, and also so. Eight and nine, Steve, I, my heart was also racing. So I'm like, which could it be? Which of these men? Um, and, you know, it fit a lot of them pretty e- easily. And they all look super suspicious in that top left uh, side of page nine. Um, and the fact that Shuten Maru doesn't say anything. And he's not ki- he's kind of been super quiet, too. It could be anyone. Um, so I, I think it was really shrewd of Oda to make it, you know, could be mm-hmm. any of them. Steve, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I, I wanted to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, Steve. Uh, there's a George Carlin bit where he's talking about, like, you know, the, the, a lot of stuff. But uh, at one point he mentions that when somebody's murdered, uh, they they like the news reporters will go to the neighbor and the neighbor will say, well, he was always so quiet. And then somebody in the background would say, it's the quiet ones you got to watch. And that's <laughs> that made me think of. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Always nice to get a couple, like, get more impressions of former Shining Time Station conductors on this podcast. So uh, much appreciated. Well, we're two for two. We're two yeah. for two, aren't we? Because we got to do Alec Baldwin next. Um, right, back to One Piece. Uh, so yeah, like I, I began just like starting to think. I'm like, oh, I guess today's Mountain Gear recap is gonna be all about debating who the traitor was. Uh, and then, then yeah, Conjuro just hit us in the back with a steel chair. Um, 
And one thing I want to talk about is Oda doesn't really do this too often, kind of alluding to something Ed was just saying before. Uh, we don't get too many heel turns in One Piece. Uh, and But I had to be reminded, I was like, yeah, this is like the first big heel turn in a while. And, well, the first big heel turn, and a friend of mine was like, uh, CP9. And I'm like, okay, my mistake. Squared. Uh, I forgot about squ- that. Squared was more like it, he was deceived, and then like he quickly was like, oh, I yeah. messed up. Uh, that that came close putting like you could classify putting as a heel yeah. turn but like the fact that she was redeemed i that's the thing like this is one where i don't think conjuro is redeemable here it's just like with uh no it's like it's not like cp9 because i remember people were still hoping well maybe kaku will join the crew and realize the government bad um <laughs> not, that wasn't the I case like the so, there yeah yeah do you, do you this really is, think Conjuro is not redeemable here? I feel like he'll find a way. Well, it's One me. Piece. Every, everyone. Yeah, it's, is it's, like it's One Piece. Yeah, right. yeah, you know what? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, take back what I said because think about it. I'm thinking about it. It's maybe like a like a Baby Five kind of scenario where he clearly doesn't know any better, or maybe not, not so much. He doesn't know any better. Like he's so disillusioned and he's just. I want to say like even like brainwashed because he is like he said he was willing to die in that in that pot with the rest of them just to, you know, to not, you know, just to keep the illusion up. He's that yeah, dedicated. It's, it's not even that he hated them, which is the really crazy part. Yeah. about it. It's that he just enjoyed acting so much that he, you know, <laughs> was willing to go to any lengths. Well, to, I mean, like, but also like Orochi or like Orochi has found. Fan- as I guess a member of like the splinter family of the Kurosumi, like his family was persecuted and like, he had, I guess his parents were legit murdered because they were mm-hmm. Kurosumi family members. So that he does have that. He does have that resentment that we never knew about until this chapter. I love that mm-hmm. you say that he like loves acting. Like he, yeah. Conjuro is truly the Daniel day Lewis of the one piece. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He method. is. Yeah. Give this man an Oscar. This is, this is method acting. Yeah. Yeah, he'll he'll retire after this role. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm sh- I'm sure Orochi is like, hey, you think you could get like really skinny like Christian Bale? And <laughs> Conjuro's like, I'm halfway there. Um, uh, I predict that Conjuro will get redeemed and be like, oh, actually, all the but all the good times I had with you guys, that wasn't that wasn't fake. Like I I don't know. Like I do actually love you guys or something. That's my guess. But I could also see him being like, "Fuck you, Conjuro," and a uh, fucking get wrecked. Either, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could, I could see. I think what is most likely to happen, knowing Oda, is that he gets wrecked, as you said, and then he goes on his own little adventure and gets redeemed, kind of to the audience, but not necessarily to the Akazaya. No, it's more like he could do. He, he could realize like, no, I, there were some good times. You're my real family. Uh, I'm good now. And then they put him in sea prism cups, and he's like, "Oh, all that stuff I did." you still have to go to jail Uh, but I just like I I wasn't even joking when because I'm thinking oh okay so probably this whole manga chapter is going to be about trying to like piece together who the traitor is and then to just be immediately hit with that reveal on the following page I I, I had to back away from the chapter I'm not joking I like had to process that because I was thinking like like this is someone we knew for years. We laughed at your drawings. We love Ryunosuke. Like, how dare you? <laughs> that was that's the most devastating thing. I didn't realize it until Roger posted it. But like, oh right, Ryunosuke, no, you can't do this to us. Um, I named an external hard drive after that. He thing. could have been drawn so much better. <laughs> yeah, I remember we were talking about separating the art from the artist. <laughs> 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 Jeez. Wow, I didn't think this would be. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but okay. we know what the intent was. Uh, but is this, but I, <laughs> I, my heart like sank. Like I, it got such a reaction out of me that it, I don't think I've gotten quite a reaction like that since Zoe with the uh, the mink reveal that they uh, that they knew where uh, Riza was the entire time. Like a little bit different context, but those. These two moments like really struck a chord with me while I was where I really had to like step back and process it for a moment. Uh, so like yeah, just like a hell of a reveal uh, and very different for One Piece. Like this, like I said, like heel turns like this don't happen very often. Uh, but of course, you know the big thing is uh, the 
the Shabondi reunion with uh, Luffy, Law, and Kid at the end is great. Uh, yeah, it's it. Yeah, as many times as you see like Luffy come in at the last second to save the day, you know, all you need is just like the right you know score from the One Piece soundtrack, and you're just like, nah, this is always amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm lo- looking forward to reliving uh, that time in Shabondi, and nice to see uh, this everyone get out of uh, Wano disguises and. Looking forward to seeing what the new outfits are. I'm looking so forward if you're to seeing wondering, Kid kick some ass finally. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm coming. Let, let the boy getting have... his ass kicked. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? I'm like ready for, for this shit. Well, yeah, you saw the training that he was doing in the prison. Like, he's going to wreck stuff, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to add, um, I th- I th- this is probably a little off, but I think we were introduced to Conjuro on July 8th, 2013. Just to give you guys Jesus an idea Christ. of how long this yeah. this long game has been. And, you know, I believe Oda knew the entire time, given especially what has happened since, uh, his, his general plans for him, at least. You never know. I remember when uh, one of the character polls came out around that time, like all like the I mean, there was three Wano characters at the time, but they all ranked really low in popularity. Right. So, right. so I can't I can imagine it being like a wrestling booking. It's like, eh, he's not really over. Let's turn him heel. Um, uh, Ed, why, why don't you go? Sure. I, I just like this this chapter being sort of dr- driving because uh, we're finally out of the flashback and we're back to the depth of desperation where we were at the beginning of the flashback with Kinemon, you know, you know, in their little dinghy with the samurai at the depths of despair. And then, you know, I think, Alex, you were saying it was parallel for the audience about last week's reveal with Denjiro. And this is Kondro's reveal this week but for uh for kinemon and the samurai it's just like the worst like on top of the worst it's the worst thing and then there's more bad things to happen and then we get that sort of depth of despair and we get Kondro turning on them we also get the luffy like it's a great uh, coming to save the day moment um so yeah uh, uh, just to add that in oh that was it ed yeah oh, okay um, yeah, I'll say my piece. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, no, I loved this. Uh, I really loved this chapter. This was one of the most like enthralled, I, I think might be the best, best word for it. Um, that I've been with a chapter in like, uh, as long as I can remember. It, it's, it's really, I love the long game. And if you remember the only freaking reason or the main reason, not the only reason we went to Tres Rosa um was because of conjuro uh being one of like the two or three reasons uh with being trapped in that little isolation cell and if you think about it i wonder if do flamingo also knew uh conjuro's role um in, in all that and that may be you know part of the reason why he was there and why he survived um so i'm super curious about that um, and also probably part of the reason why Kinemon ran into so many problems just immediately off the bat. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it definitely makes me want to go back to maybe even Punk Hazard and, uh, see, to read all of this again. Um, which I guess I'll do at some point. Um, the stuff with the only, only little qualm I have for the chapter is the blood bags, uh, that, uh, Kurosaki war just seems a little i don't know it's one piece though and it's i guess it's not the most ridiculous or contrived thing we've seen maybe she should have packed a rubber knife <laughs> remember it's exactly <laughs> yeah, remember. <laughs> oh uh i wanted to point out that the the second to last uh the second to last spread um, when you see, uh, you know, hey, sorry, we're a little late and all that. I love that uh, these these three principal pirates, um, their faces are obscured by by word balloons as if yeah. you don't know who they are. But it's it's just very it's anticipatory. You know, it's these little anticipatory tricks that Oda plays to to like, oh, man, I, I know that's Luffy, but we're not going to fully show him. I know that's kid. I know that's law. And then, you know, well, the, the kid one kind final, of almost. The kid one almost surprised me. I wasn't expecting him here and now, but uh, oh, I mean, God. obviously, yeah. That final reveal is just so satisfying when it's built up a little bit like that. You know, you get a little little bit of a tease. 
And I think we're all forgetting the most important thing. And Maddie pointed this out on Twitter. Um, Luffy is wearing a coat. Yeah. Well, I, um, what I so what I what I uh, completely forgot about was right before we started this flashback. Uh, you know, everybody gets cool samurai duds. And then I, my one thought was like, oh man, Oda's gonna have to draw those in every single panel. <laughs> um, but now uh, looks like uh, Luffy's not wearing those right now. So good, yeah, way to way to save yourself some work. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Any other thoughts on the chapter? Otherwise, we can move on. Uh, it's just a really good chapter. I just <laughs> I just want to emphasize on that, especially with what we've talked about recently. This was an amazing chapter. I loved it. Yeah, I, I feel for I, what, Kinemon. I just want to add to here. Um, he is uh, going through some things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steve. One more, one more thing, Steve. Go going ahead. through a great chapter of One Piece. <laughs> Trying to end it on a positive note. <laughs> uh, one, okay. One thing I want to I, I, just this chapter Sorry, was really good. It was a good chapter, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Okay, and I'd like to say note. this was a this was a good chapter, <laughs> real solid, <laughs> fun times. Well, you guys are forgetting that it's a good chapter. So. And they had like a traitor in it. Oh man. <laughs> okay, that's gonna do it for the manga recap. Let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> All right, so we move on to the next spread. Uh, Ed, this is you. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> This is the Anime Recap for episode 924, The Capital in Uproar, Another Assassin Targets Sanji. I'm your host Sam, and today with me we have, once again, we have Ed. Hello. And once again, we also have the One Piece podcast's very own Steve Yurko. I almost thought you were going to hit me with the, the Rick and Morty zone. See, I thought Steve of Yurko. doing that, but I wanted to, I wanted to throw a curveball. Sure, it's the, the, the One Piece and Morty's Steve Yurko. And of course... We have joining us once again, we have Jill, the Minister of Chill. Hello, I'd like to point out there's only four people in this cons or on this call, so it's still pretty good at social isolation here. <laughs> Legally allowed in Austria. I don't think the coronavirus can transfer through Skype yet. I don't think it's Not evolved yet. to that point. Which you know with all no the, the mutations <laughs> that Yeah. It's in the cards. Uh, so the the episode this week begins at the title card begins us at four minutes and eight seconds and it opens with Big Mom is on the scene uh, as we saw in the episode there was a two week gap but now uh, we come back and Big Mom is is continuing to charge on Wano and her children are still um, fighting off the cannonballs we're cross cross cutting between uh, this battle and uh, Orochi's banquet as well as there's a few shots of the octopus from like the very, very beginning of Wano that uh, has not made a comeback since. Uh, but he's he's getting in here a couple in a couple shots and also a drinking Kaido. And it's like very merry. It's like very like upbeat, like everyone's having a good time. Meanwhile, here's this like this big battle uh, where Big Mom's just like very thrilled to be uh, laying some whoop ass. And uh, we have a scene with Luffy in prison. He's just kind of looking up at the ceiling, looking pensive, remembering his fight against Kaido. And uh, suddenly, Raizo appears with news that Otama is feeling better. So no news on uh, getting Luffy out of prison, but Luffy is happy to hear that uh, the Otama is getting better. She's been tended to. Raizo and, um, and Orochi, two characters, you forget how big they are. Yeah. Until you yeah. see them compared to like other characters, well, like <laughs> just big, they're, they're oddly uh, proportioned. Yeah, I love seeing uh, Rizo act as a real ninja because I mean, it's the dude's head is so funny. When the guard passed by, I was like, "How? How is it possible you didn't see that?" It's like uh, in Wind Waker, we're going through those halls with the the moblins and the uh, the lamps. Uh, we Very come true. back. <laughs> I have a feeling no one got that. No, no, no. I, oh, I, was, okay. I was there. I, I was there to back you up, bud. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so we it's back to the Big Mom scene. Big Mom takes Napoleon off of her head, and he goes into sword mode. And she starts chopping at some cannonballs as well. And as she does so, Queen's surveillance gets cut off. I don't remember if this was in the manga or not, where 
uh, Queen is is keeping an eye on the whole fight. Uh, but Kaido's trying to rile up his men. He's like, okay, it's going to be an all-out war. If, if the big mom pirates are here, we'll, we'll give them hell. Um, and that's when King just sort of gets up, and he's like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> he, he just walks out, turns into a, a Pteranodon. He's got the dragon, dragon fruit, ancient-type model Pteranodon. And uh, he's still got the the kind of the BDSM gear as he transforms, but he's swooping into battle. And uh, as the Big Mom pirates are, they're being pulled by the carp, and they they get pulled up into the air, and it looks like they're about to to land on shore. But then King just kind of swoops and like kicks them with their his uh, his like talon, and uh, the ship falls over, and Big Mom specifically falls off the ship and into the whirl the whirlpool that Luffy almost drowned in at, at the beginning of the arc. I yeah, like how uh, King gets a title card. Like, we got time for a big neon green title card <laughs> as yeah. he's in the middle of this attack. It's um, it, it's pretty badass, actually. Yeah, I uh, so far, Whirlpool uh, thus far hasn't had a great uh, track record for actually killing people, so... <laughs> I like how but King still has, weird. like, the flames on his back when he's in Pteranodon mode. Yeah, whirlpools. Uh, yeah, they might not work very well in this series, but uh, yeah, they're very comfortable to sit in uh, at the hotel <laughs> pool. Uh, we it, this is a little bit extended though. We get to see uh, King do a little bit more than just uh, uh, kick the shippy ship face, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Because I'm pretty sure his big reveal is just that double page spread. Kicks the mm-hmm. ship. They tumble over. This one, like he gets the. Uh, uh, what's it? Like Galette, it, yeah, Galette is like shooting a Gatling gun at him. It's it's pretty great. It's an like it's awesome uh, extension to this uh, sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. And elsewhere, we have uh, Page One is stomping through town and kind of like peeking through windows and and stuff. And we get just like a very very uh, overt Jurassic Park homage with the there's a guy who's just sitting with the water cup and the water cup does like the the rings thing with uh, each step of the dino. And uh, page one's attacking Soba shops and he's got the dragon, dragon fruit, Spinosaurus. And I love how just like all the dinosaurs are just kind of catch all this. They're, they're a type of dragon, dragon fruit, even the pteranodon. I think I thought I always thought that was an interesting detail. And then that brings us to the eye catch of the episode. And when, when we come back, it's uh, Usopp and Frankie running through town trying to figure out what to do until they run into Sanji and Law. And then, so now they're all running as a group and Law's going on this whole spiel of like, okay, if you get caught and they start torturing you, just stay quiet and let them kill you. Don't, <laughs> it's like, give your life for the, our secrets. And uh, Usopp is a little freaked out by by that because that's uh, so much more cold-hearted than uh, something Luffy would do. But Law's just like, hey, I'm not Luffy. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty serious about this. Uh, just want to go back a step. Uh, I really like also talking about like uh, padding a scene out a little bit. Uh, showing page one going to more uh, sober restaurants mm-hmm. is really great. It's, but I just like him tearing a, a hole through the wall and just peering in at that one guy mm-hmm. and him just being like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I, I like that uh, his entire plan is just like he has to assume that Sanji gives a shit about these his com- competition basically and that he'll come to save them when the dude's had a soba shop for like one day i, I thought he was just like well, he, he like hears, all he knows he is soba later. shop so he's just beating up all the so- soba shops until the guy comes out <laughs> well yeah that too uh, i like how uh to try stay disguised frankie turns his hair into a ski mask <laughs> that's kind of freaky <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> so creepy stuff. You know, like a hair mask? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not good. Usopp uh, has a fun gag where he's like, oh, if if I get caught, I'm going to spill the beans. And, and Sanji is like furious that this is like, well, well, if, if that's what's at stake, then I will protect you no matter what. And I guess that was exactly what Usopp was planning on. So now that if he threatens that, that he's, uh, he's gonna, not going to be a, a, a good torture victim, then, uh, Sanji feels more obliged to protect them, and they call that like friendship power or whatever. Uh, so yeah, there's a kind of an extended sequence of Page One destroying Soba shops, and uh, the the shop owners are kind of screaming from a distance. And uh, he eats a giant bowl of Soba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
eating on the job. Even dips it in the sauce too. Yeah. Like yeah, it's it, it's amazing. Uh, it's just a big spice. <laughs> I, I hate to sound repetitive and be like, oh, was this in the manga? Because uh, I, I just jumped on this segment like last second. Uh, I, I think he was eating giant soba. Noodles yeah, I remember. And, uh, I remember that shot. Right. The like with the soba noodles kind of like hanging out of his his maw. I didn't quite realize how ridiculous that was till I guess I saw it in animation. Just you know, he sets himself a big you know bowl for dipping. <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's a giant dinosaur with with like a half purple mullet and it's uh and the noodles look like the hair yeah it's it's something else <laughs> so sanji uh, hears the screaming and he feels uh compelled to stop and uh worry about the the innocent people getting hurt uh jill what were we gonna say oh i was gonna say i don't know why i never noticed this in the manga but i love that his tattoo is like off center <laughs> because it's like they, I don't know, right from left or something in Japanese, but they like started writing page one, but they couldn't fit the P on his chest, so they had to stick it on his arm. And I just thought that was really funny. It's, it's like diagonal, but like you have, you, you would like have to hold his body in a certain position for like all the parts of the tattoo to line up. Yeah, I also didn't notice that till this episode. I'm like, oh, but the P is on his arm? <laughs> ridiculous. Um. So... Uh yeah, Sanji he he goes running and he gets a big kick on Page One and he's uh, and he and he knows that Page One is somebody who d- wouldn't recognize him uh, by his face, so he feels comfortable at least for this moment uh, uh, fighting Page One uh, face to face. He's got a really cool line here where he, where he's like, uh, you know, they've been talking about recruiting allies at the soba shop and trying to build their army before the the big fight. And Sanji has a great line here where he's like, it would be nice to have more allies. It would also be nice to have fewer enemies, uh, saying that he's gonna just kick the shit out of page one so that he's not he's not around for the, the raid. And uh speaking of raid, Sanji pulls out his raid suit from uh the Germa double six. And it looks like he's about to use it. And he's uh, kind of suggesting that that'll be how he keeps his identity secret from uh from Drake, for example. And he smiles and then to be continued. The two being continued has like a big uh, glow and like a weird sound effect. I don't know if there's like a very specific like Sentai Kamen Rider uh, reference there, but that's kind of the vibe that they seem to be going for. I mean, never it's, have it's I wanted. Very cool. it's very, never, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, never have I wanted a double header for uh, <laughs> anime episodes. I wanted, I wanted the next one right now, but yeah, I, uh, because we've been, uh, we've been. <laughs> We've been deprived for the last two weeks. Yeah. No, I'm just being deprived of Soba Mask being animated. <laughs> we've been we've been waiting to see what Soba Mask looks like in color and animation since the beginning of Wano. We've never seen it in the hey, opening hey, or hey, anywhere also, else. Okay. The transformation <laughs> scene is going to be good. The, it's Toei always yeah, puts money in that. Yeah, like if it's one thing for them it's to kind of take like, up the whole half of an episode. Like, well, they'd be damned if like, well, we we have to show Soba Mask in the episode preview because that's basically all this episode is going to be. But yeah, I'm glad they didn't show much of the transformation. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be like the main entree of the next one. But uh, I did like the to be continued gimmick though. Uh, nice. We don't get that too often. So mm-hmm. I feel stuff. like they've done it at least in the last couple of months, they've done it at least three times in recent memory. They've been doing it more. Yeah. But it's pretty good. I really liked the uh, that that last to be continued. The way it like s- like slowly went into it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, yeah, like, what? Like like it's the regular to be continued, but then but then and then like it gives you a second, and then suddenly it starts to. Like, uh, no, it was great. Like it, it, I, I immediately thought of like one of the Baratier episodes when like a piece of like wood just was like, like, just being launched towards the screen, and it just happened to have to be continued on it uh <laughs> i want more of that more gimmicky stuff yeah. my more. favorite one's probably the law one where the the splotches come out i like that one a lot oh, oh what, 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 yeah what was that episode? one um somewhere near flevin's um in law's flashback the to be continued slowly the white goes over the screen oh yeah with the oh. the, the disease the skin disease yeah. thing oh, i gotta i gotta check that out again that's i'll try to find it for you general thoughts on this episode you guys Who wants to go first? <laughs> Me? Go. You can go. Uh, I thought it was a very well-paced episode. It looked great. Um, 
Uh, I really like the, uh, it's not implied filler here, but it's just, it's fluffing out the existing scenes already. Uh, I think it really helped build the tension more with page one, uh, with him just rampaging all these uh, soba shops. Uh, I really enjoyed the sequence of King fighting the big mom pirates. Uh, I think just getting to see the big mom pirates act as a unit more, uh, even though they kind of did that in Whole Cake Island, but seeing them on like a pirate ship looking like actual pirates was pretty great. And um, and uh, yeah, like the the stuff with Sanji Law, Usopp, Frankie was all good, leading up to uh, the to be continued. Uh, I something that just came to mind, and I haven't really talked about this publicly, but I thought maybe now this would be a good time to just bring it up the anime recap. I, I feel like Yao's performance has changed a lot recently as as Frankie. And I don't want to make any assumptions and, and be rude at all, but I think it's, I don't know if it's just like an age thing, because that voice is very taxing, it's a lot of yelling, but I feel like it's not as strong as it used to be. Yeah, I remember when Wano started, I was wondering if you, if him and, uh, and Usopp, uh, Kape Yamaguchi, if they were doing like a, kind of a, a dramatic, like kind of stage performance type, like where they're drawing their lines out a lot, a little more. I guess I hadn't, over over recently, I haven't um, thought too much about it. It hadn't occurred to me, but I, like I could see it. I could see it. I could be. I could see like mm-hmm. he's uh, how old is Kazuki Yao? He's seems like he'd be one of the older. I don't ones. know, like sixty. Well, he's got, I'll check. He's, he's got gray hair. He's always had the gray hair, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is uh, sixty. Yes. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm, I don't want it. I feel like it's very rude to be like, oh, well, he's getting old, so that's why. But I mean, I, maybe I, we're just I, waiting I, for Frankie to really, really have an important moment. Yeah, to really just rip. <laughs> yeah. But now I just I remember that convers having that conversation, and we were talking about that. Like, are, are they putting on fake voices here? Uh, but but other than that, it's a really great episode, and mm-hmm. Yao's still doing good job. But it's definitely it, it feels like more like he's he's yelling indoors. Mm-hmm. Uh, loud talking yes yeah <laughs> uh, um, I, oh, go, go ahead, ahead. Joel. no okay. go ahead. uh yeah i really like this episode um they packed a lot into it but um it didn't seem like the scenes were too fast we even had like implied filler that was really well done um i really liked the like steve was saying the big mom pirates acting as a unit when they were going up um I love the line where Kaido's like, ah, Lin Lin and her kids are coming for me or her brats. And I was thinking about it. I was like, wow, this dude, it's literally like this woman that he's known for most of his life is showing up with her bunch of children <laughs> to, like that. He pretty much knows all of them. I would assume. I don't want to babysit. God damn it. <laughs> he's probably like, God, she's bringing her kids to my kingdom. Also, God. a lot of them are like 50 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of disturbing. No, but I thought that scene was really fun. Um, I love seeing all the dinosaurs. Um, I think Oda draws them really well, and seeing them animated just makes it funnier. Um, I mean, King being on fire, page one eating the soba noodles. It's just that, like, that that ridiculousness that makes it even better. Um, yeah, I thought this episode was really fun. Um, obviously, very, very excited for next week's episode. I am expecting really good things from the animation team for this one, because uh, the other Duramas were really great. So, I'm excited. Ed. And then... Um, yeah. Um, what I liked in this episode was I think the um, just the the big mom getting big mom over again because like she was almost taken down by the straw hats in the last arc, but they, they got away from her, and she's just right back into the action. She doesn't need any downtime. She's she's very intent on sort of getting getting at straw hat, but I guess it also shows how powerful King is to sort of knock her off the off the uh, the waterfall like that. So. I don't know. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the episode. Yeah, uh, I think this is a good episode too. I really like. I really like seeing page one in color. I, I, I think Steve was kind of lamenting his his uh, lack of black hair last week, but um, I really like the purple. But it's purple. <laughs> I, I I like the purple. I like the Jurassic Park. Uh, I love the the big mom scenes. The, the I love the stuff with the big mom. The stuff that in the manga kind of. It suffers a bit from being so like, uh, like it's very the, abrupt. It, it's very abrupt. The you know because the plot yeah. in the manga is just so tightly wound. Uh, um, and uh, and yeah, that, that these are the, the scenes like, that really, yeah. uh, the anime really kind of can bring 
uh, some kind of it make it feel more organic and i think that's i'm i'm feeling that already even though she's been here for like one episode yeah and it's inter- it's going to be interesting to see what they do with her uh for the rest of the arc because she is not uninvolved <laughs> so i don't want to spoil anything but yeah uh i look forward to next week uh, silver mask is exciting and uh i think uh, i think that should do it you guys ready you guys have anything else you guys want to say no, stay inside <laughs> stay inside yeah all right, I think we can move on okay. to the next segment then. All right, Steve. I'm just I'm I'm just being berated by Jill. I'll listen. I'll listen. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I right, see you guys. Hi. Uh, all right. This is the Piece Together segment. We have questions, we have comments, we have theories, and they're all a work of Machiavellian art. Ed, what do we have? Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. What do we have going on on, Ed? What do we call it? Dispeas. There we go. Steve, what do we have on on Discord? Dispeas. Sorry. I I wasn't sure if I was going to be saying it. Uh, Okay, we got a bunch. Uh, Our first question is from King Doji. And they say, listening to the special episode about Watsky and the fandom, wondering what would make you guys step away from the series. I, don't know, I, think I feel like I made it. Did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I yeah. thought I made that clear in particular on that special episode. Yeah. Murder? So, yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends who he's murdering. Let's go through each that's person. The la- that's the last straw. I mean, draw, yeah, the- there's, you know, there, there, there's potentially a justification for, for that <laughs> compared to what Watsky did. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's right, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even going to judge up any like scenarios here. But uh, I guess, I guess murder questionable crime. Is, is it going to be like? What is it? Is, is Oda redeemable? <laughs> <laughs> um, if he did what Conjuro did, that's just too messed up. Um, oh, like friends. Um, are you saying like Oda's actually like a better artist than he lets on? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that would be so, yeah, that would be twist. very evil yeah Oda, what if Oda's like draw- i <laughs> i was about to say Oda's like i am really good at drawing at drawing feet i just choose not to draw them in the color spreads and i'd rather have them have really long legs <laughs> <laughs> or maybe secretly Oda draws like every other anime manga and anime artist but he just refuses to um what's the next question steve Next one is Big J of Today says, I can't say how much I love this podcast and the well-rounded discussions you all have. As a social worker and addiction therapist that works with trauma, the themes in One Piece are beautiful, including from a social justice perspective. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the nuanced discussion about around Odin. Although I love this flashback in Odin as a character, I'm a guy, so it's easier to write off the bad parts. I think Kendra articulated accurate frustrations when media misses the mark and how it values women. I think of uh, I think of the Bechdel test and how important it is to critically evaluate the media we consume. We could love a story or movie or manga and still be frustrated by its limits. I could see why this especially uh, why this especially so with One Piece as. There have no. I can see why th- why this. I'm, sorry, I'm just gonna. Hmm. I can see why this is especially with One Piece, as there has been so many stories that highlight a woman's autonomy and dreams, rather than defined, rather than defined as an object or their romance. I would love a special episode with Brian and Kendra discussing social justice in One Piece. Also, the past couple of chapters really set the mood to go back into Wano from the Roger Reveal stuff. Can't believe this flashback fit uh, basically a 30-volume separate manga with multiple arcs into a volume or so. Oda's storytelling is amazing. Oh, that was a, that was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you for the comment. I th- yeah, I think social justice is a is a really interesting question, especially with uh, Fishman Island I'm thinking of in particular and how that was handled, one, whether you think well or not. Um, I think there are definitely some interesting questions in, in how Oda handles that. Um, yeah. Steve? Uh, I think kind of Big J put it best without me even having to answer, just saying, like, yeah, we could enjoy the things we like, but, you know, we could still be very critical of them when they... Uh, they fall flat, and Absolutely. I like to think that's what we do on this podcast. Uh, we've done in the past, uh, and to uh, 
Yeah. And some people uh, didn't quite agree to put it lightly, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think we said a lot in the last couple of weeks, so I don't know what else to say. There, but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there, there are topics that could be debated um, ad nauseum, not for, not for bad reason, just that you could keep going. Is that okay. it? Uh, no, there's plenty more. Okay. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> this, this next one is from Ralph. Uh, and he says, Contro, you absolute bastard. How could you do this to Ryunosuke? Thinking back, it almost did seem like he wanted these creatures he drew and brought to life by his hand to suffer. Plus the whole stealing the hair of the living and dead uh, things bring up another concern. Isn't he the one who took care of Yasue's body? That's true. Yeah. yeah he was we'll the one who... Out. Who delivered it. Although I think like honestly the all the the stuff with him talking about how he was like one with the group and he didn't hate them or he wasn't like secretly hating them. He was just literally passing on information that to me says like he wasn't he wasn't like scheming to mess around with them in other ways. He was literally just doing what everyone thought he was doing. Uh, it was just the the passing on info that was the the way he was screwing them over. Mm. That's what makes a good actor, you know. Don't, yeah, don't, exactly. uh, don't leave your role. You're a method actor. You were always conjurer. The only time like, you're you know, is when you pass information. Yeah. You know, he's a real son of a bitch for being a traitor, but he did do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, That's no one problem. doubts that. Yeah. yeah. He shared his he shared his fries with me. Uh, uh, all right. So next one comes from Sil Dredo. Uh, this new chapter was the epic result of a long haul that's been going on since Shibondi and a long con that's been going on since Dress Rosa. Any moments like this in media that you guys felt like it took forever to actually occur, but once it finally did, it felt like pure, unadulterated catharsis? Yes. <laughs> I immediately thought, like, oh, does that happen in professional wrestling? And I immediately realized, no, not very often. <laughs> so I was thinking... I, there were a lot of series where there were, that I could think of that there were there was this kind of heel turn, um, like Lost in Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek DS Nine. Can you tell like, the thinking, kind of shows I like? <laughs> definitely thinking of Lost, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Lost. I remember what is that the end of season two? I think the whole. I'm not going to say who it involves if you haven't seen Lost, but there's there's a character who is, you know, potentially. Bad. But then again, Lost didn't end up making too much sense. So no. I think uh, uh, I think like a, a really good uh, show as far as like, um, you know, setting up and then delivering on um, like a, a thematic arc that it was doing would be like Breaking Bad. Um, mm-hmm. Like they, they really knew exactly what they were doing with uh, a lot yeah. of the main characters on that show that uh, I think was very satisfying uh, when they kind of wrapped it. I'm trying to think of like a heel turn in a television show or movie where you're like with the person for a long period of time and it turns out they were evil the whole time Um, so they're specifically asking about heel turns no no just like just long payoffs okay Mm -hmm. i see oh yeah well sorry one this is a very obscure answer but any of you ever played or know the game soul nomad heard of it but i need on ichi rpg jrpg and uh i won't say what the thing is but it has one of the wildest out of nowhere late game heel turns i've ever seen it was <laughs> very very unexpected oh the uh, one in the one in bleach actually did really get me the first time i read that oh yeah the one good that part of good bleach. One. that was the <laughs> only good part of bleach <laughs> yeah i don't know good uh, good 60 episodes there yeah yeah uh, um, now that I think about it, I don't know. Maybe this doesn't pay off too well because this is like a, you know just all in the content of one game. But uh, I really enjoy the story of Metal Gear Solid Two, and it's such a confusing game the first playthrough, and then when everything lines up, it's such like a it, it's a it's a really good twist, and it's one of my favorites. So maybe there's a little bit of catharsis there. But I'm trying to think in the long run of like an ongoing series. I can't think of many. Attack on or, Titan had something similar, but I don't think very well done. Eh, it's okay, I guess. Uh, actually, one series that I fucking love that has amazing not just heel turns but just setup and everything. From Alchemist, the or, oh jeez, yeah. it's like so many. 
That mm. is a series that is clearly like crafted from the very beginning, and she knew exactly what she was doing. Uh, and yeah. So, like, I would compare like whenever I'm like, what are some things that are Oda esque in terms of like, oh, hey, here's Laboon mentioned here, and then bam, it's like Full Metal Alchemist does that kind of shit too. Uh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. Love FMA. Yeah, Can't believe I forgot about FMA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, we got some more. Uh, Straw Hat Pirate 9. I am devastated. I am shook. I am so heartbroken. Conjuro, you guys talking about it on the podcast is going to be my therapy session for dealing with this grief. Thank God for Luffy Law and Kid being badass at the end, because if not, I would be dead. Uh, <laughs> in a way, I kind of agree. Like, say, if the chapter ended with that heel turn, it would be... Quite the cliffhanger, but quite quite a bummer to end on for sure. So that's just my opinion. But if anything else, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, this one from Morgil. Man, this chapter was great. Unfortunately, this week was the one Sunday out of the month that I had to work, but we were slow, so I managed to sneak off when no one was looking to read the chapter. Uh, I remember doing that <laughs> plenty of times before. Yeah. Uh, that that final page with Luffy Law and Kid making their grand entrance uh, grand entrance was so awesome that I returned to work with a huge grin on my face, which had everyone looking at me weird because I'm the kind of guy who rarely smiles at work. But <laughs> yeah, well, it must work retail maybe. <laughs> but it's yeah, that, it's that one that one piece after glow, man. That's <laughs> definitely the thing for sure. Yeah. But yeah, while the reveal with Conjuro was big, that ending was still the highlight of the chapter for me. I could just hear the anime score in my head as I was reading it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't think we talked about well, we did, but we could always talk more about how well we talked about the whole like last twenty minutes of the manga recap. But how awesome that spread is! Um, mm-hmm. So badass. Want it on my wall. Um, what's next? Uh, next one's from Joe. Uh, so what happened to Shinobu? We saw her behind Momo early on in the chapter, and then she just vanishes when Kanjiro shows up right where she was standing. What's up with that? I still don't trust her. Uh, you could see her on the shore. It looks like she's like knocked been out. like knocked out or something. It's yeah, that's, very small. That's probably what the answer is going to be, but it is not obvious in the least. So yeah, that was something that occurred to me when I reread it today. I was like, wait a second, there she is in that one panel. Where did she go? What if that was so, like another. What if that was another trick by Conjuro, where he just walks up to her. Yeah. It's like, it's okay. I got the child from here. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then she's like, wait yeah. a second. Uh, <laughs> wait a um, second. It's like the child, Momonosuke. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't get can't get over Zach saying like, uh, the child, Momonosuke, important. You know the kid. Part. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <you> know? <laughs> And the last one's from OG San, made it in just in time. Hey, OPP, I want to start off with saying how refreshing each week's episode is. It's never been better being an OPP listener with the variety of opinions and guests. Your passion is definitely still there, regardless of any disappointments you have with the story. Now, zooming in, we see a silhouette next to Conjuro and Momo on the beach. We thinking she's dead or just knocked out? Also, I can't wait for the Scabbard reunion. It's too early, but Dentro and Cat Daddy showing up next week would be awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that Cat would Daddy. be so awesome. Cat Daddy. Cat Daddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that kind of just answers Joe's question there. Um, I, I, it's Shinobu's pure. She, it, mm-hmm. I think Absolutely. at this point now, now that we know who the traitor is, the story That's would not yeah. benefit from having a second traitor uh, other than just shock value. That's just bad wrestling booking. So, I want go. half of the scabbards to be. Oh, by the uh, Kinemon too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Nami. Nami's also uh, the whole time. That, that's no, that, a crazy that one there. So wait, they're they're all traitors. Yes, no, like, they're you're all... the traitor. I'm the traitor. Right, right. Uh, and I then um, uh... <laughs> Gan Fall shows up. Uh, and, like, he he was also a traitor. <laughs> Uh, but some, some God, like, actually i was i was a, I was a vengeful god so. to be fair nami did do a heel turn back before our long park so she was actually the traitor um no but that was her she... acting because right, that's part of well. arc but then you find out oh that was actually an act as well she's a traitor of a traitor yes it's a double what do they call it a double agent um triple agent Maybe quadruple agent. I'm so sure when I'm you correct. when you stabbed your Arlong tattoo, she's like acting. What? 
I only had one arm the entire time. Um, so it just takes off. It was a arm. stunt arm. Where is this so Shinobu you... panel people are talking about? I don't know. Yeah, where... I'm trying to find it too. I can't Here. find it. Um, it's, Isn't uh... she trying to hold on to Momonosuke? It's, no, but it's... where's her silhouette? I was trying to see. Uh, page no. 13 when uh, Kinemon's yelling back at the shore. Uh, and we see, uh, we, we see, we really see off in the distance uh, Kanjiro grabbing uh, Momonosuke. Where okay. those like four lines are. Oh, oh, so there's oh, a, yeah, a little left. bump. Yeah. Uh, that's yes, a lump next to where Kondro is. <laughs> Whatever that that might be. Um, wow. I, I, I feel like people are just there. Are you guys are dedicated. Like I don't. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> hey, I no, had this thought. <laughs> I had the same. I had the same thought too. I was like, wait, where'd Shinobu go? And then I was like, ah, I guess that's it. Oh, clearly the that's, dot. That's, or let, that let, let me use my magnifying hand. glass and it's I like a fully rendered Shinobu. <laughs> <laughs> I think Oda just expects a lot from his readers at this point. Uh, yeah, this 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 manga is nearly a thousand chapters. That's understatement of the of the century, Zach. To be fair, yeah. Uh, is there anything else on uh, Discord? That's that's all. I'll do it. Wow, that'll do it. Okay, let's move on to Ed. What do we call it? E. Emails? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Emails? We've been doing we've been doing this for years, and every time he's just as confused about it. It's perfect. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so shift, <laughs> shift from AP forums uh, had a quick question about Orochi stopping Conjuro. Says he said in that in the past before Kinemon's group left Wano, uh, but Conjuro had kept up the act the entire time. Did Orochi ever stop him before then? Because it seems like it only happened the day they left for Onigashima. I think that is. I think that is the case, right? What's that? Yeah. I think he was asking if Orochi had tried to stop him earlier. Um, stop him from doing what? Stop him from revealing himself. Like end the. Oh, oh. The well, uh, yeah. I'm. I'm sure that that was whenever they were communicating about all the plans and stuff. I'm sure he was like, "All right, you gotta." let the jig go up here because we got to bring you back um, before yeah. you get killed before we kill all the other ones. So I'm sure it happened off screen at some point. Um, we have a, let, let's move on to um, let's move on to Reddit. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I cut out some of the Reddit questions, Susan. So we did get some um, repeated questions. So we will start with ATLA for life who says, how do you think Kinemon got his devil fruit? We know that the Kurozumi family has been getting their fruits from outside sources or just finding them. But what about Kinemon? He's the only other Akazaya with a devil fruit, and we never saw him get it, nor did he leave Wano, or maybe after he left Wano. Well, How do you think he procured a yeah. devil fruit? I'm thinking he got it after he left Wano because we never saw him. Do we ever see him use it before? No, but we we hardly ever see him use it. Period. So well, he used it to um, dress yeah. up as Do Flamingo. Our favorite part of uh, Kinemon's character is when just he dressed, dressed up as Rosa. a fake Do Flamingo. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, I forgot I, that was his. I like forgot he had a Do. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I had to think for a moment. It's um, clothes beam. It's his clothes yeah, beam. Fruit. It's, right. it's not like that. It's nothing not like, to do with his fire powers. That's completely different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying. It's not like you could use Piccolo's clothes beam in like Dragon Ball Fighter Z. So <laughs> that'd be cool if you could, though. Oh my god, that would be amazing! I would just forcibly that. change your opponent's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Uh, you shall right. wear hot pants, and that's the yeah, that's what he does. Uh, Jets fan fifty one says, "Hello, this question is for Steven. If possible, I would like for you to discuss your translating process. How long does it usually take to translate a chapter?" What dialect does the original come in, kanji, katakana, or hiragana? Do you translate the chapters like you would translate a menu to someone who couldn't read it? Elaborate anywhere if possible. Love the show and enjoying Samurai 8. Thanks. Um, that's, that's kind of it's the way. So when you say translate a menu to someone who couldn't read it, does that mean like just dictating it to someone else who's sitting next to my desk? Um, Is that like the time script? when we... <laughs> <laughs> Is, Is that like the time we read that... Uh, translated menu for the podcast oh, oh yeah god um, the uh very god. broken english yeah it's menu like from hiroshima yeah that was that was amazing um it was, uh, it was like yeah, clothes so, of the something anyway go ahead yeah. 
I, I, I procured it this morning or whatever. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. So I guess, first of all, uh, kanji katakana hiragana, uh, Japanese is written with all three. There's no one of them that is only used, uh, in, in this case. So, uh, they, they, they all work together. That's how the language Wait. goes. With shonen manga, doesn't he try and stick with katakana, or at least put the he puts the katakana translation above the kanji usually, right? Um, yeah. Here, so yeah. yeah, so that so that's kind of like a um, I guess a, a learning aid maybe. Uh, so for for books for a younger audience, um, they will often use they call furigana, which is just where it it tells you how to pronounce the kanji that appear um, where when you're an adult, you should be, you know, you're literate enough to understand how almost everything is read unless it's something really rare, in which case they'll, they'll do it anyways. Um, but uh, so, so like Shonen magazines like Shonen Jump, Shonen Sunday um, sources like that, they will have all of the, the kanji have uh, the, the hiragana that, that show you how it's um, read. So, uh, that definitely makes it easier if you are a student um, to 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 read things and to to pick up on how certain kanji or certain words are um, are said. Uh, as far as how long it takes to translate a chapter, um, it kind of depends on on just like if there's anything that is is tripping me up or that requires a lot of uh, like extra thinking. I remember during Whole Cake Island with a lot of the a lot of the puns and the weird things like, oh, God, the um, the carriages, the like cat carriage and the pig carriage where it took like I, I spent like probably an hour or two just trying to come up with something uh, for both of those um, stuff like that will will really uh, slow me down. But usually if there's nothing that bad, it takes a few, you know, maybe three hours or so. Um, and nowadays, uh, one piece is much denser than it used to be. So especially in Wano, like it takes a lot of time, a lot of time just because every page is packed full of text. Um, and maybe, maybe that will chill out a bit once we get into some, some fighting and action stuff. Um, we will see. Um, so yeah, that's generally how it goes for me. Uh, Kieo says, uh, kept meaning to ask this question for a few weeks, but of course I never made it in time. Something I noticed while going back to the flashback is we never see Okiku in her armor or mask at any point. I think it's interesting that during the prison break, she was recognized because of her mask and now has her armor on. But back 20 years ago, when they go with Oden to fight Kaido, she wasn't wearing it. Just feels like a minor thing that got looked over for how much stuff was covered in the flashback. But I was wondering if anyone else had any thoughts. Kind yeah, of I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there's definitely a couple small details like that, and and like Kinemon's fruit, where it's like, oh, he didn't really touch on. Of course, he, you know, he had a million things to write about in that flashback, but um, it does make me wonder if we'll see more about that kind of stuff um, with the action part. Um, all right, yeah, I guess it's a, it, it will remain a mystery. Uh, Blackleg three says. Uh, Oda is an absolute genius. The traitor finally revealed Oda might have pulled this directly from the historical figure Yamada Emosaku, who was a painter slash daimyo traitor during the Shimabara Rebellion. Do you guys think Oda will be pulling from other historical Japanese events, except example in the Meiji era, for the rest of the arc? Keep up the awesome work. Um, so, yeah, I, I looked up this this guy. He's not a, a, like especially a household a figure, but it was kind of interesting. So apparently... Uh, he was a follower of um, a military figure during the the early uh, era after the Portuguese missionaries came, where uh, the the very first kind of wave of Christianity uh, started spreading through Japan, and then there was like a big crackdown on um, on on Christianity. I think Odo Nobunaga was a big part of that. Um, and so there was this, this general that this guy, Yamada Emusaku, who was a follower of, um, who was one of the principal, uh, Christian figures. And so he was fighting against the, uh, the shogunate and, uh, Emosaku was basically a double agent and he was also an artist. Um, and so he was like secretly passing along the information to the shogunate that helped them, you know, eventually, uh, defeat this, uh, this Christian guy. 
and and then he was uh, the 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 traitor was granted clemency when uh, he was uh, arrested by the the shogun's forces. So that was kind of interesting. I don't know if that was like directly um, meant to be what what you were supposed to associate with uh, the way that some of Oda's like uh, story or, or like character arcs and, and details have been very clearly based on other things like uh, like Orochi being a sandal bearer. That was very very directly based on Hideyoshi um, who rose up through the ranks like that. Um, but uh, I think it's worth pointing out that like almost everything in Wano is either based on some historical figure or based on some trope from samurai movies or uh, samurai novels or, you know, is um, something from Rakugo or Kabuki or something like that. Like he's just, it's like a clearing house. He's just like, uh, bringing out every little uh, reference that he could possibly use and, and throwing them all together in this kind of glorious mishmash. So I would definitely expect uh, him to continue that um, if he uh, if he does. Uh, Soul King fan says, I was listening to your special episode about your fandom and experience, and I just wanted to say thank you. I've been listening for about two years now, but this is my first time writing. Personally, as someone who barely ever talks about my hobbies and lives in a country where One Piece pretty much doesn't exist, your show has been an inseparable part of my One Piece experience, and I'm truly thankful to all of you for putting so much effort every week. It really means a lot. Well, thank you. Um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a that. Yeah. very nice comment. Uh, that's why we do it. Uh, why we're here. Niver says, yeah, Niver says, is Oda going to have to write the germ pirates differently now and go a different direction with the cover story due to current events? Uh, <laughs> uh, what if they're just I, completely written out and then it's like, like why, I don't think why, anyone why, why would we, notice. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And, and, and be like, why were we kissing again? Like, oh, we're all just incredibly horny. Just change them to the washing hands pirates and you like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the volume heroes. comes out. The volume comes out, and they're just these weird blobby silhouettes um, with with eyes. It's like, what the, what's going on with these pieces? Well, uh, you know, you know who the real hero is, Khalifa. I think we've we've learned that at the end of the, yeah. at the end of this day, she she could save the world. Yeah. Well, she could just like oh. She just could turn into bubbles and make people smooth. Isn't it really like Suru we should be thankful for? She she literally has the wash wash fruit. Yeah, or yeah. we just need like a Dr. Kareha. Or is it wasn't there someone who had like a vex I I think I'm thinking of even cough with the hormone injections, but did someone have like a vaccination fruit? I actually surprised that doesn't exist. <laughs> no. We just all gotta be turned into drag queens. That's the only way we're gonna overcome this virus. I agree. Doc, I agree. Dr. Kareha Dr. Kreha is the uh, the American medical system. She'll give you the shot. It's going to cost you ten thousand bucks. <laughs> she is, yeah. Um, yeah. Or maybe Wapple is where he uh, hoards all of it just for him. But um, we'll find that out soon. What's next? <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, almost done. Uh, Travi says, "What? I just want to say, what makes this, <laughs> what makes it great is this chapter dropped on the Ides of March when Caesar was betrayed by his followers." Ooh. Man, not sure if intentional, but wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. No, definitely not intentional. Uh, last one on Reddit. Grand Reboot says, all right, so I did not like the way Kanjuro revealed himself. Don't get me wrong. Setting up Kanjuro as the traitor with all the clues so subtly was genius on Oda's part. But I did not like how the reveal took place. Not only was it out of nowhere, but he also revealed his motivation instantly. Don't know. Maybe I am getting too old for shonen already, and subtlety isn't a thing in the genre. Or do you all feel differently about the reveal? Um, we named an episode a long time ago that bad guys don't know when to shut up, and um, I believe that that is a consistent trope um, here too. Uh, Steve, what were you going to say? I hear you with uh, kind of you know getting a little bit tiresome when things are pretty like you know literal and. Uh, but uh, this was like the best time for him to reveal because they were being surrounded by the uh, Animal Kingdom pirates and they thought they were as good as dead. And also, uh, you know, One Piece is fantasy and also it's a story. Uh, while, you know, I like things being relatable, I don't want things to be grounded reality. Like, don't, if you're ever like watching a movie or, or a TV show and you have someone sitting next to you saying, like, oh, that wouldn't happen. Or it's like, oh, 
obviously that would never happen. And you're watching like a damn cartoon or something. Uh, they're an idiot because it's meant to be dramatized a bit. Like, no, no one would ever reveal like their deep secrets right then and there during a storm on a boat. But damn, does it not make a good manga chapter? So, yeah, it's just satisfying that way to have them like spill all all the beans i mean it's it's you know it's just a a cliche of of writing in general but you know it it exists for a reason because that's like the the fun of it um you know like if if they beat conjure or if like uh like conjure just silently walks over to the other side and everyone's like what like why are you doing this and he never revealed why he like that he was oh he was a kurazumi or that all all of this stuff like that makes it personal for them like that's not necessarily satisfying like you want you want to feel the emotional rush of it and that's why the big reveal is so satisfying Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's it for reddit and it's time to peace the tweet yeah it's time to peace the tweet Mike Morris says um, to have almost every question this arc answered in two chapters. Just wow. <laughs> Thanks, Brian Ian. Uh, our very own Brian Newton writes in to say, uh, didn't think this phrase. Um, let's see. He, he included a picture. It says, oh, it turned out to be a little freak who sold brushes made with hair for a living. <laughs> and he no, also proves. That. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It is funny. And and that Odin just beats him up and that's how he joins, which is, to be fair, how most of them join. But yeah. it's like it's like Odin secretly knew this guy's a little freak. Yeah. Right. It's a little piece of shit. <laughs> and he, uh, Brian also approves of Luffy's popped collar. So uh, agreed. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know if that's a popped collar as much as just like a big collar. Right. That's what I was getting. Big disco shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next one comes from 91 Ryan, who says, I was not expecting Condro to be the traitor. I was blown away, but blown away at the end of that. Uh, I was blown away, but blown away at the end of the chapter. Looking forward to next week's chapter. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Really, really uh, blown away. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what they're going for there. I think it's um, more that they're just uh, blown they're away. They're blown because. away. Yeah. They're blown away. <laughs> No, no way. It was a good chapter. (laughs) That's what he's trying to say. So how do you... uh, It um, was a good chapter overall. (laughs) Guys, Contra (laughs) revealed himself to be the traitor. (laughs) That was pretty good. Why did he say what he was doing, though? That was weird. Wait, 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 wait. Who's Contra? (laughs) I don't blame you. Uh, Yeah, yeah. To be fair, there's like 8 million characters in this arc. Um, All right. Jacko Man says, one of the most amazing things about One Piece at this point is the scope. We just got betrayed by a character who's been around for seven years and 250 chapters. It's yeah, incredible totally. to think about. Yeah. It's like a quarter of the series they've been around. Anyway. Really? Yeah. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, friend of the show, Sai, writes in to say, so how do you feel knowing that Condro's terrible art was actually designed to be that terrible? I think Alex put it perfectly where he said separating the art from the artist. Like, <laughs> wow, that's going to be really difficult here. Cause I love, and I've said this before. I think we like, we're trying to posit like who the trader was earlier. And we went through all of the Akazaya nine. Um, and I'm like, no, I can't have that. I love his drawing and his fruit so much. It can't be him. Um, and also, him. so yeah, it's like, like you're, you're a well-trained artist. It's really difficult to draw bad you know so uh I mean, oda did it for conjuro so. conjuro mastered it so yeah. well, i mean let's, good not break, for him. let's not break the fourth wall here come on <laughs> all right uh one more uh a couple more uh Glugglura raptor says um piece of the tweet me and my girlfriend just rewatched thriller park and she noticed that it is the first adventure with the thousand sunny and by the end they free a thousand shadows allowing a thousand people to be in the sun again uh, oh. What other parallels between Dawn and the Straw Hats can you think of? That's cool. I didn't realize that. I never noticed Any other? That. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. With, with specifically the Dawn? Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. Isn't uh, Emu, like, putting out lights and stuff? Um, oh, it's just, it's just like an hour. Well, they were saying the Straw Hats. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I the stuff with Toki is, you know, the you will see the coming of the dawn, you know, that whole thing. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a giant ship with a big lion on it. 
Yeah, maybe the thousand sunny is the sun that rises. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's what she was referring. Maybe to. the thousand sunny was all the suns we've met along the way. <laughs> I like it. All right. Finally, Pow SA says, "What's your favorite theory about Bonnie?" <laughs> Luffy's all mom. Of them. <laughs> all of them. But the thing yeah. is, she ended up being probably Kuma's daughter or relative of some sort. Um, whoa, whoa, so that whoa, was a f- whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Who, who's assuming that? Well, she said, da- didn't she say, like, no, oh, you no. no, no, daddy or my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, you were too busy getting married during that manga chapter. So uh, was that yeah. that week? It, uh, no, it was, it was right around that. The reverie. Sorry. No, I, Jewelry Bonnie calls him daddy. What? <laughs> no, no. no. Zach. I thought that was just for my fan. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could leave it on that note, unless you're, if there's any more, Ed. No, that's it. Yeah, I'm, so let's leave it on that note. Um, let's round off and do a little bit of trivia. Oh. This has been the One Piece podcast for uh, this is March 15th, 2020, episode 612. And I do want to say, you know, just on a more serious note, I am actually very happy that all of you guys are healthy and safe right now. And I hope you stay that way. I was Uh, making some light of it early on. Jinxing it. Stop jinxing it. (laughs) I said right now in this moment, I am happy. Please stay safe. Okay. Is that better? Wake up tomorrow. Oh my god. <laughs> now you're jinxing it. Uh so uh, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Uh if you haven't, please subscribe to us on patreon.com slash one piece podcast. We're gonna put a lot of stuff up there. Since we're all stuck at home, I'm hoping that we could put out a lot more material than we normally would over the next week. I certainly should have some more time. Uh so we'll you know, keep an eye on social media. There's nothing specifically planned, but uh, especially on, if you're on Patreon, we might do some live streams and stuff. We'll see. Maybe some Jackbox. I don't know. Uh, so check that out. Patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. Subscribe. Help us all out during this this difficult time, if you can. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, how could people contact you? Uh, Sungwon, where could people find you? What have you been in lately? What are you up to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you can find me uh, on YouTube or Twitter or uh, ProZD, P-R-O-Z-D. I uh, do good-ass tweets and good-ass vids. Uh, otherwise, uh, voiceover-wise, um, stuff I can't talk about, but just you should follow my Twitter and then you'll find out about those things uh, as they happen. Um, but yeah, uh Go ahead and check that shit out. Thank you, Sungwon. And yeah, we're a huge fan of everything that you produce, and everyone should check out everything that Sungwon is producing and been in and voiced in, uh, if you haven't. Um, Steven, where can people find you? Uh, you may follow me on Twitter at Translatosaurus for pictures of my cats and my neighbor's cats. <laughs> and uh, you can read my work on One Piece and Samurai 8 on uh, Viz's Shonen Jump app and website and Manga Plus. Uh, let's see. Maddie, since you're in the background, do you want to let people know uh, where they could find you, contact you, whatever, find your work? Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at oh, that's Raspberry, and you can... Uh, well, I used to have a Patreon, but I'm moving to Japan, so that's not going to happen Ooh. anymore. Congrats, but, I um, I should be that. having I should be having I have um chopper stickers coming out soon and then I'll probably be having a sale in my shop because I gotta close it. So uh if you follow me on Twitter, be on the lookout for that. Yeah, Maddie you officially got a job teaching in Japan. So that's awesome. Congratulations. Yay. Thank uh, you. Hey Maddie. Out in the middle of uh middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, in Alabasta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to like, I looked up Totori and I had no idea. Japan is like Every single climate is there. How is that yeah, possible? I don't believe that. It's yeah. nuts. Where in the San Bucaro are we? <laughs> Do you mean where in the San Bucaro are we? Oh. Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, 
um, yeah, Maddie, I, I hopefully we'll still have you on when you're in Japan. Who knows what your schedule is going to be like? Um, either way. Yeah, no, I mean, on. obviously, I definitely want to try to be on as much as I can, but it might be come like a Greg situation where I just yeah, appear yeah. whenever it happens. Yeah, and yeah, we'll have you on as much as we can and make sure that you do a manga page and trivia as much as possible. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Those are her favorite. Uh, I know. I also want to. I also want to mention that this week's alternate images really good. So again, patreon.com slash one piece podcast. You can check those out at $3 and up. So uh, yeah, don't, don't miss those every week. Those are great. Um, Alex, where can people find you? Find me on Twitter, 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 Twitter <laughs> at, at dude exclamation, all one word. Um, also listen to Toho Yaro, a uh, podcast about Japanese film that I do with uh, Joey from this podcast and our friend V. And um, now that I'm fully settled in my new apartment, I can finally put out the new episode and uh, hopefully we'll be back on our regular, our regular monthly schedule. So, um, yeah, please look forward to that. Congrats on the move, move. And I'm wondering what music is in the background, but I won't. Oh, yeah. Me and my girlfriend listen to Motown while reading, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm letting you all y'all letting y'all have it. So during trivia, enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And Steve, where could people find you? Uh, You could follow me on the socials, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Steve Yurko is the username. Uh, listen to me on other podcasts. Listen to me on the Deep End. Listen to me on Tune Suite. Uh, watch Duncanville, currently airing on Fox and Hulu. And I uh, just want to say uh, this was a really good chapter of One Piece this week. <laughs> it was. Um, oh we should talk about Ed, it more right now. And a trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How could people contact us? Uh, well, you are Zach underscore Logan on Twitter. I'm Edward E. One Piece. I'm also at Weeb Trailers. You can check out my old trailers there. Uh, let's see. OnePiecePodcast.com is where you can find the podcast. OnePiecePodcast at gmail.com is our email address. One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. Twitter.com, YouTube.com, and Facebook.com slash One Piece Podcast. Patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. Please uh, subscribe there. Let's see. Uh, you can subscribe on Spotify. Subscribe on uh, SoundCloud, subscribe on the iHeartRadio app, I think. Uh, you can also subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or call us on our phone number, Zach. And that phone number is 347-497-MAJI. Maji. That phone number, again, is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Anytime. With your questions, comments, theories, or where you could find a frosty chocolate Korizumi. Um, So, uh, <laughs> before we go... Uh, there's another chapter next week, as far as I know. We'll be back then. Um, we also may do, um, as I said, other podcasts I'm thinking of doing, maybe community podcasts, too. Uh, you know, just to get people you know, in the game more. So maybe we'll do, like, a Piece Together-centric or something. Uh, so, again, if you're not following us on social media, as Ed, Ed mentioned, all the ways you could do it, really, just search One Piece Podcast, you'll find it. Um, looking to do more of that. So let's do some trivia real quick here. So this has been the conclusion of the longest flashback in One Piece history. We had around 15 chapters um, of this flashback from 960 to 974. Um, So I'm going to ask you guys if you know who was Oda boxed in this uh, flashback. That means a character who was specifically introduced in an Oda box. Um, all you have to do are name them. Uh, if you, so, how this many is are there? What's an Oda box? So Oda there box basically just says the name. So it says uh, Monkey D. Luffy. Uh, you know, uh, King of the Pirates under it. You know, the 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 box that says the the full name. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, basically, normally in uh, in not in non one arcs, it has little little curly Q frame. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, ba- it's basically name the major characters of this arc is where this where this lands. There's some though that didn't get it. Um, so oh, okay. there are a lot, but this is all you have to do. We're going to go around in 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 this order: Ed, Stephen, Alex, Steve, and Sungwon. Uh, you name one. If you either name one that isn't on the list, um, name one that's been said, or can't think of one in in whatever random amount of time I decide <laughs> in around in like five ten seconds. Uh, we'll go on to the next person and you're out of the round. Um, there's only one round, so you're out. Uh, so why don't we get started? Ed, do you want to name a character? K- 
Kozuki Odin. Good choice. Taking the easy one. Uh, Steven. Uh, Kurozumi Higurashi. Correct. Taking a hard one. Um, Alex. Uh, Denjiro. Yes. Uh, Steve. Kinemon. Correct. Sungwon. Uh, Toki. Yes, she is definitely here. I'm just trying to find her. It's a long list, as I said. Um, Ed. Okay. Um, oh, still in, by the way, after that first first man. Sure. Uh, Goldie Roger. I'll I'll take it. It was actually Gold Roger, but I'll take well, okay. it. Okay. Uh, Stephen. Edward Newgate. Correct. Alex. We okay. Um, let's see. Burr, 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 burr. God. I'm enjoying the background. Oh, yeah, so yeah. As long as you need. <laughs> God damn. This is where it's going to get really tough. All these characters. Uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Uh, very, give you very important. Here. Okay. Three, two, one. And I will say uh, Kawamatsu. Correct. Even though that was really cheap. Um, <laughs> uh, Otsuru? Yep. Miss, Miss Suru, it said, but yeah, I mean, obviously, same thing. Um, okay, nerd. <laughs> Sungwan. Dogstorm. Good, yes. Uh, where is he? There he is. Um, Ed. Izo. Mm. Correct. Steven. Uh, Kiku. Kiku no Joe. Yes. There she is. Um, Alex. Cat Viper. Correct. Uh, Steve. You guys are doing really well. Uh, Orochi? So that's a weird one. His, uh, his, the only time Whatever he was introduced. Whatever his stupid name was. <laughs> who, who did you say? You said Orochi, right? Orochi. Yeah, so his name is actually done in the background. I'm going to give it to you because I wrote it down here in parentheses. Um, but it was like a sound effect. It was kind of interesting. It was different than usual. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was you, Steve, right? Sung Wan. Yeah. Kaido? No. Ooh. No. Uh, Ed? Um, Yasuye. No. Oh. No? What's yeah, Yasuie? Sorry, Shimotsuki Yasuie. Yeah, I'd have written down as the wrong thing. You're good. You're right, Stephen. Okay. Um. Oh boy. Uh. Let's see. Yeah. Uh. Hiori. Uh. Yes. She. Oh uh, no, no. She no, does. Sorry, wait. 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 Hiori. No. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember who actually got a box introducing them or not so sorry i was mixing up <laughs> who that was um that might be a hint to someone alex uh danger uh, no 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 i already said danger ashra doji uh correct <laughs> that yes. way as well uh steve there's only three people left if steve gets this there's only three pe- oh so four <laughs> <laughs> no no if if steve gets this there's three left so there's four. Right so there's now. four. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks. there's two plus Steve potentially. Go ahead. Never mind. Go ahead, Steve. Not important. Cool. That just broke my brain. No, uh, no, no. I, I, I also just meant amongst amongst you. There are a lot more people left on this list. There's a ton. Oh, God. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um. I went through mm. all of these while you were doing the piece together. <laughs> and like, wow, these okay. people got okay. it. Yeah, go okay. Ahead. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Three seconds. Uh, this is dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it Ezo? I, I already said that one. Uh, uh, mm. All right, remaining in the game, Ed and Alex. Who will win? Yeah. Ed. Uh, Rizo. Yes, Alex. Uh, Conjuro? 
Yes, I cannot believe you guys did not say Kondo. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck uh, me for not remembering 15 who's names Kondro? that were said. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> well, I thought that uh, when you said not everybody has them, so be careful. I was like, oh, well, he was going, well, he was going through like, you know, the, the introductions seven. of Kondo. No, no, and all there, there, there and are by some, everybody, there are you mean like. Every pivotal character in this flashback. No, has had Ka- one. Kaido didn't have one. That's a good example. Yeah, I was surprised. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I am yeah. also surprised. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not a uh, traitor. So, guys, there's mm-hmm. seven left. Uh, Ed, you're next. Okay. Um. Including I will... without Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with Hyogoro. Um. Correct. Alex. Who is, who is Hyogoro again? Uh, old old man Yo. Oh, oh right. God, duh. Um, okay, Shinobu. No. Oh! <laughs> Ed wins. Ed wins. Uh, uh, let me Ed, wait, before you go on. Uh, can yeah, I ask you if it. Marco Shanks and Buggy are on that list? Nope. Okay. Never introduced better. formally. Yeah. Uh, Ed, do you want to guess any others since you won? Oh, uh, Bumanoske. Nope. No. Okay. Well. The yeah, kid. there are some big ones left off. Well, he introduces it. Odin introduces him. He's like, and this is Momonosuke. Um, the answer is Kazuki Sukiyaki. Mm. Ca- this is this is the craziest one that none of you in a million years would have gotten. Captain Karma. Who the fuck is Captain? Oh, Karma? the <laughs> octopus guy. The octopus guy who fought oh, against Whitebeard in the flashback, fuck. but he joins the Whitebeard pirates <laughs> in the present. Oh, deck. the classic Captain Karma. <laughs> Everyone's favorite, <laughs> most beloved yeah. character. Oh, he sneaks he up. He should have been the traitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke me. Uh, um, next one, Tom the Shipwright. Oh, oh. God. Oh, okay. What a long flashback. I have... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Charlie, uh, not uh, Madam, age three Charlie here. Um, my just favorite. many years old. She's Toddler just... Charlie. Surely. Um, this is the one I'm most disappointed that none of you got, especially Steven, uh, but especially Alex. Um, Duke Genghis Bon. Guys. Oh, God. Oh, got it. Yeah. The what coolest are you doing? name. Genghis the coolest Bond. name in, in the entire series, Genghis Bon. Um, and the last one, you got one of them and not the other, Kurozumi yeah. Semimaru. Um, Semimaru. Yeah. Semimaru. Okay. Semimaru. I don't remember so, the barrier guy, right? Yeah, barrier yeah, user. Number that's one. Old, I, that's uh that's crappy Bartolomeo. <laughs> crap yeah. Bartolomeo is his, is his, it's Aunt Crap Clay and Bo- Crap Tolomeo. I would have also taken it. <laughs> Fart okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Or, I like that one too. So that's gonna do it for the One Piece podcast. Sa- Sung Wan, thank you again for coming on the show. And Stephen, of course. Thank you for thank having you. me. Yeah, um, so that's gonna do it. We're gonna be back next week. Uh please, everyone out there, stay safe. Wash your hands and just stay away from people, which I think all of us as anime and manga fans, you know, <laughs> nice and easy transition. Uh, no, but seriously, wish you all the best. Um, and if anyone wants to reach out, feel free to um, just generally um, one piece podcast at gmail.com. And uh, that'll do it for this week. We'll be back next week. My name is Zach. My name is Ed. My name is Steve. And my name is Alex. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, buddy. Just one more question. Chapter. <laughs> one more question. Uh, who is Conjuro? been searching for the right place to bury my bones <laughs> it would be an honor because we don't know what they sound like no, right now but your that, that voice sounds honor. that voice sounds like, like Homer Simpson, or no, Homer <laughs> he's, Simpson from season one i was yeah, well he's he's been Philippa. protected uh his voice be been an honor. <laughs> we should all go out for frosty, frosty chocolate, chocolate, <laughs> chocolate milkshake <laughs>